You're watching NASA TV. Well, good morning from Mission Control Houston and welcome to our live coverage of Russian EVA 50. That's the 50th spacewalk out of Russian airlocks in support of the International Space Station. At this moment, you're looking live on the Russian segment at the Poisk module where two spacewalkers, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov are currently inside. The hatch is still closed. Both cosmonauts have entered into their Orlan spacesuits and are in the process of depressurizing the area inside of Poisk. Um, so they're going to continue to bring that down all the way just to about vacuum before they open up the hatch and begin the spacewalk. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt, and I will be taking you through everything over the next several hours today. This is the second spacewalk in just about a week to continue the outfitting and preparation of the Russian Nauka uh, Multipurpose Laboratory Module, or MLM, uh, the recently attached module to the Russian segment on the space station. Uh, there will be quite a few tasks today to get through, uh, some that were deferred from the spacewalk last week, um, including uh, finishing uh, the connection of an ethernet or a data cable. Um, so just running through all of our tasks today. Uh, they're gonna continue finishing connecting that data cable that'll link the US segment and the MLM. Uh, that's going to be used as a redundant path for any payloads uh, housed in or on MLM in the future. Also providing a redundant path uh, for controlling the European robotic arm or the ERA on MLM that arrived uh, to service the Russian segment with the new module. Uh, they're also going to be redirecting an external monitoring unit. Um, it's uh, mainly used for uh, inspecting any plume impingement. All of the primary thrusters on the space station are located on the Russian segment. And as you use propellant in space, it does have the potential to leave a residue or um, interact with the surfaces on the outside of the station. So this is just a monitoring unit already installed that they're going to reorient for future uh, any operations. They have a number of bridge handrails, uh, essentially gap spanners, you may hear them called. Uh, these are just handrails that will be installed along the outside of the MLM uh, to assist in translation or just moving around during future spacewalks at launch without these handrails, and now they're being installed just to uh, assist in uh, any future spacewalks by these cosmonauts. Again, we, we're gonna have about a dozen, uh, just shy of a dozen total to do all of the outfitting of uh, the MLM module. Um, and so this will assist in all their future endeavors. They're going to be routing a number of cables today. So the, that first one, that ethernet cable, um, they're also gonna be connecting uh, some cables for the TV system uh, between the Russian service modules, Vesta and MLM, uh, to integrate their two TV, their video systems. Uh, they'll also be routing and connecting a cable between the cores units. So the cores is used for the automated rendezvous and docking of the Russian Progress spacecraft, the cargo craft. Uh, they'll be connecting a cable between uh, the service module and uh, the MLM uh, to um, to integrate the two and that will uh, assist in uh, the handoff that happens during the final approach of those progress vehicles as we'll be using MLM as a docking uh, target in the not too distant future. Uh, aside from that, they're also gonna be installing a platform with some adapters on the outside of uh, the MLM that will be able to host any payloads in the future. Um, so that'll be one of the final tasks. Also, uh, one of the tasks that was deferred from last week, installing the BioRisk biological specimen containers outside of the Poisk module. These will be three containers that contain different samples that's exposing them to the vacuum of outer space um, to just determine their, um, their feasibility in that really harsh environment. Uh, the BioRisk also looking at things uh, like potential contamination and we'll go through the study a little bit later. Um, and then one final task, again, time permitting, they'll just take survey photos of the Russian segment in the exterior. Uh, we'll see them taking photos quite a bit throughout the day 
as they continue to attach all of these cables, uh, usually taking photos of the final attachment point. And those all get shared with engineers down on the ground for a final review to make sure everything looks good. And we'll have a couple of connectivity tests throughout the day of the spacewalk as well um, as they get all of these different cables attached. So all told, uh, spacewalk planned to last just shy of six and a half hours, six hours and 26 minutes uh, in the exact accounting. Again, that's just an estimate of everything. Uh, we'll be going off the schedule pretty quickly once we get moving. Uh, but today it'll be Oleg Nowitzki again. He's going to be EV1 or in the suit with red stripes on it. So he'll be easily identifiable by just looking for the stripes. Uh, and then Pyotr Dubrov will be EV2. This is the third spacewalk for each of these cosmonauts, uh, both previously completing two together uh, with a total of 15 hours and 13 minutes already on their spacewalking resume. And we'll be getting the helmet cams once they get outside. You'll see a small 22 uh, in the bottom corner of Novitsky's helmet cam and a small number 20 uh, in the bottom corner of Dubrov's. So once they get out the door, We'll begin to get those helmet cameras looking over their shoulders as they work in the vacuum of space for about six and a half hours. Copy. What's the MRM2 pressure for the manual pressure gauge, please? It's practically the same. It may have risen by about half a millimeter, but no more than that. Okay. We're going to wait another minute. Or so. Copy. So at this moment, Novitsky and Dubrov are still inside the Poisk module, inside their airlock. Uh, they've been moving pretty quickly through the timeline today, so both got into their Orlon spacesuits a couple of hours ago and then closed the hatches inside uh, to isolate that MRM2, that mini research module, to the Poisk module. Um, they were assisted in all of their suit up by NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, uh, who's going to remain on board the, the Russian segment throughout the spacewalk. Um, once getting into their suits uh, and closing all the hatches, they began to, a gradual depress of the airlock, stopping at 550 millimeters of mercury, uh, which is about 10.6 psi. Copy, Oleg. Uh, let's uh, prepare uh, cue card 7, step 11, Orlan transition to internal power. Um, please uh, stand by for my go to uh, start working on that step. Copy. Cue card is ready. Copy that, and we just got a go for you to start working on step 11 of key card 7. Copy, step 11. Temperature control handle uh, to position 6, 6 for both uh, EV1 and EV2. Verifying Orlan pressure is between 0 decimal 35 and 0 decimal 4. 0 decimal 37 uh, for both. Uh, turn off uh, primary uh, fan and primary uh, pump uh, and lights on the uh, 5M panel. Verify in primary. And again, right now, they've continued the depressurization of the Poisk module. Uh, they were able to bring it down to about 10.6 PSI a little bit earlier today, entering into what's known as a pre-breathe um, that taking place uh, just a little while ago at 13.45 GMT. Uh, or just about 8.45 Central here in Houston. They completed that after about 30 minutes, that pre breed done to just kind of help purge all the excess nitrogen from their blood, as when they're in these suits, they're going to be breathing pure oxygen. Um, those familiar with U.S. spacewalks see the, the astronauts typically doing some light exercise. Um, the cosmonauts able to, to purge the nitrogen without going through that as their suits operate at a slightly higher pressure. Um, you, you're hearing them call out some numbers between 0.35 and 0.4, 
um, yeah. locking in at 0.37. That's measured in atmospheres, so 0.37 atmospheres. It's about 5.4 PSI, which is what they'll be uh, operating in throughout the spacewalk today. One and two. Power is off on the uh, uh, panel. Uh, we're both on internal power. Uh, demating electrical umbilical. That's complete for both suits. Copy. And sounding like their suits on internal power. Now for U.S. spacewalks, that will typically start the beginning, but uh, for Russian spacewalks, we mark the beginning of the EVA or the spacewalk once the hatch is open. Uh, so we're still a couple of minutes from that, uh, expecting it to open around 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, or 1500 GMT. MLI cover. We did hear a report that there was a good final leak check done on the Poisk module, so everything progressing really smoothly so far today. Any shape or form. That's better. And then before we really dive into the spacewalk today, we did just want to uh, give an update for folks uh, that had heard about a smoke alarm inside the space station uh, last night. Uh, just before 10 p.m. Eastern time, a smoke alarm inside the Russian Zvezda service module did enunciate, uh, waking up the crew with the smoke alarm going off for about a minute. Um, the crew did report uh, burnt plastic or an electronics type smell in the Zvezda module. Uh, reported uh, the same but faint smell also in the U.S. areas in Node 1, which is connected directly to the Russian segment. Uh, no source was found, uh, but air filters were cr quickly replaced. Uh, the crew was able to go back to sleep and uh, all sides uh, of the smoke smell dissipated. So didn't impact any of our operations so far today. Uh, no impact to the crew themselves who are going throughout their normal day and this spacewalk proceeding normally. Uh, but we did just want to give that update before we really dive into today's spacewalk activities. We assess Orlan interface uh, unit. Uh, the um, O2 flow selector knob is in O2 closed position. Can you um, Peter, can you see if the blinkers are closed or not? It's kind of hard to see. But I think it, it looks closed. And this is better. I can confirm that O2 open is closed. Um, verifying uh, pressures. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, pressures in suits and um, pressures uh, in uh, primary oxygen tanks. Um, it's a zero decimal uh, thirty uh, six for EV one and primary O2 tank uh, is showing 411 for EV1. For EV2, the pressure in the suit is um, sort of between 0 decimal 37 and 0 decimal 36. And primary O2 tank uh, pressure is 406. Copy all. Go ahead and uh, put the stowage cap on uh, both fluid umbilicals. Uh, Peter, if you'd like, I can help you. Yeah, because it's going to be hard to do uh, in this position. Uh, guys, um, uh, there's no need to rush. You can take your time. Um, you are uh, head of schedule, so... Uh, uh, do uh, take your time uh, to do everything right. And again, we're continuing to hear the two cosmonauts, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, going through their final checks before they get ready to open the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. 
Again, they're in those Orlon spacesuits. They're giving out uh, pressure tank temp, uh, pressure tank pressures, um, also reporting on the, the pressure levels of their suits, and they're going to be operating at right around uh, 5.4 to 5.7 PSI throughout the spacewalk. Uh, normal atmosphere pressure inside the station, and for those of us here on planet Earth, is about 14.7. Um, so working in a, a lower pressure environment just so they can still effectively move inside of their uh, spacesuits, which are in of themselves almost miniature spacecraft, uh, having uh, a backpack with uh, oxygen tanks, batteries, communications equipment, um, and uh, they are a pressure vessel. Uh, the Orlon's a little bit different from the large EMU spacesuits uh, that you're familiar with with U.S. spacewalks. Um, the Orlon is a one-piece suit, and it's entered in from the back almost through a hatchway, essentially, uh, with the uh, backpack swinging over. Uh, the backpack does have, um, again, all of that vital life support hardware, much like the EMU does. Um, one other difference is with the Orlon, the uh, the helmet and the visor and the body are just a single metallic structure as opposed to multiple different pieces. Um, the arms and legs are uh, made from a softer material, obviously allowing them to, to maneuver around in the vacuum of space and in microgravity. Um, but then the, the crew also wearing uh, a liquid-cooled garment, very similar to ours, which uh, they're able to control with the temperature gauge on the suit, uh, either raising or lowering the cooling um, for them inside while they're working. But uh, at this moment, we've already gone through the final leak check on the poise module, so once the crew gets through these uh, additional suit checkouts, we'll be ready to open the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. Greetings, Artyom. And then once they head outside, uh, they'll get a protective ring installed and then uh, arrange their safety tethers um, before they pull some of the cable bundles out, turn on their helmet cams, and then move off to begin our task for today. Uh, one of the, the first primary tasks is going to be finishing uh, the mating or the connecting of an Ethernet cable that was routed on a previous spacewalk uh, and helping to integrate MLM uh, into the U.S. segment. Um, again, this Ethernet providing a redundant path for any future payloads hosted on the module uh, and also a redundant path for the European robotic arm, which is going to be the, the primary manipulator over on the Russian segment now, uh, maneuvering payloads or potentially spacewalking astronauts in the future. Um, maybe just one, or we can just turn on both, I guess. Kind of blinding in the eyes, but uh, they're on. And this view is looking at what's going to be a lot of our work sites today. Um, Again, we expect the hatch to open up within the next 12 minutes or so. Uh, the target time was right around 10 a.m. Central, about 1,500 GMT. On, on both um, uh, Orlan suits. Copy. What about cameras? Cameras will come in later. Now we need to make sure that all of the uh, uh, items are secured and uh, will not fly out where they're not supposed to. Copy. Now, uh, verify that you are at, uh, ha you have at least one uh, tether point that you're hooked to inside the module. Copy. My father, this is Peter. Um, my both tethers are. Принято. Давление не более 15 миллиметров у нас сейчас вообще, да? My two uh, tethers are uh, secured uh, to a handrail, and uh, this is all like if you want. Um, uh, my both tethers are hooked to uh, handle uh, 6118. Copy. Um, can you confirm that uh, the pressure inside the 
the airlock is uh, less than uh, 15 millimeters. Uh, yes, it's uh, less than 15 millimeters. Copy, then go ahead and um, uh, take out the uh, hatch opening uh, tool. Uh, it's out. Verify that uh, the marks match. Go ahead and um, insert the um, uh, hatch tool uh, to the um, into the uh, hatch drive motor shaft. Oleg, I think you're a little bit in my way. Just a tad. Or more specifically, it's it's uh, your back that's in my way. And so the crew reporting the pressure inside of Poise has continued to drop. We were looking for it to get to about 12 millimeters of mercury, or just about 0.2 uh, psi. Decal and the arrow on the hatch. Uh, rotate uh, the hatch tool all the way to open position. Copy. Rotating. Right now, um, we're in eclipse. Now, now pull uh, the push uh, hatch um, uh, healing mechanism uh, a hatch tool all the way towards yourself to a hard stop. And um, uh, hold it like that until uh, we um, release all the remaining pressure. Uh, copy. Um, and Piotr, I uh, turned um, uh, towards you so I could uh, help you hold the handle. Uh, and there are some droplets, uh, particulates. Um, uh, that are uh, starting to flow towards uh, uh, the hatch. And I'm ready to continue uh, to open the hatch all the way. Here go. talking over each other. And the sublimators are not on yet. It's just that um, something um, squirted. Uh, maybe it was something that was remaining in the uh, fluid umbilical. Yes, don't uh, turn on sublimators uh, yet. Uh, that's going to come in uh, later. And I'm, re I'm ready to open uh, the EV hatch all the way. Uh, Peter, you go. Uh, you, you may do so. All right, and this is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we did get confirmation that the hatch on Poisk was opened. Uh, that hatch opening coming at 9.51 a.m. Central Time 
10.51 a.m. Eastern, 14.51 GMT, marking the official start of Russian spacewalk number 50 on board the International Space Station. Again, that time, the hatch on Poisk opened at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern, 14.51 GMT. With the hatch now open, they're going to start making their way out to begin today's tasks. Uh, first up, uh, EV-2, or Pyotr Dubrov, the cosmonaut wearing the suit with the blue stripes, is going to make his way out first, uh, fixing his safety tether uh, and moving outside of the airlock. Uh, following that, he'll work with uh, Novitsky, who's EV-1 in the suit with the red stripes, uh, to take a cable carrier with some of the cables that they're going to be routing and connecting today out of the airlock. Uh, before they turn on their helmet cameras and then Novitsky will make his way out for them to go on to their respective tasks. They're going to be splitting up pretty quickly once they get outside uh, with I got the, um, a hook. This is all like Go ahead and uh, secure it to uh, handrail 201. And um, make sure you have uh, the right slack selected. That's complete. Copy. Now you may start to install the um, protective ring. Okay, uh, let's uh, turn it this way, Peter. And again, at this moment, the hatch is open and EVA 50 spacewalk number 50 in the Russian segment has officially begun. That hatch opening coming at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern. This is um, not the most user-friendly design, I must say. But... Um, this is EV2 reporting. Uh, uh, the flag is up, and um, we can report that the uh, um, protective ring is installed. Can you do it a good pull test? Um, yeah, we pulled and tagged on it. Um, it's installed um, uh, stably. Uh, copy, Peter. Go ahead and egress um, after you um, uh, hook your safety tether to a tether point and then uh, uh, follow the lead towards uh, the operator post. And we heard the spacewalkers confirm the protective ring around the hatchway into the Poise module is installed. So now Pyotr Dubrov is going to be start uh, is going to start making his way out of the airlock. Adjustable tether is secured on handrail 6226. Copy that. Uh, now go ahead and um, take out. Um, uh, your adjustable uh, tether. And we expect it to take about 20 minutes for both crew members to get out and get their safety tethers uh, arranged while also bringing out the, the large uh, bundle of cables that they're going to be routing out of the airlock and then turning on their helmet cams uh, that will be looking over their shoulders on. And as we can see... And um, guys, um, Oleg and Peter, uh, just uh, a little bit of warning for you. In about 10 minutes, we'll be going into insulation. And um, in about 10 minutes, which is uh, right about that time, uh, we'll have uh, an expected uh, five-minute LOS. Just uh, be forewarned. Copy. Thank you for letting us know. Now, 
Петр, мы просто должны от специалиста, чтобы активировать ваши сублиматоры. И вы оба тоже должны идти, чтобы взять UKP-кабель with SMMLM1 and SMMLM2 cable bundles out of the MRM2. Copy. This is Oleg. Uh, I just secured uh, the tether. And uh, Piotr uh, reporting that he's uh, working on turning on his sublimator. And uh, Oleg, you are going to turn on your sublimator as well. And uh, that's complete. And a number of items as the crew continues to make their way outside of the hatchway. So Pyotr Dubrov in the suit with the blue stripes already outside. Uh, the crew did get a heads up that we're going to have a short LOS, a loss of signal uh, coming up uh, in about eight minutes from now. Uh, we will have almost constant uh, video and audio communications with the crew as during a spacewalk we're in what's known as TDRS critical. Um, this is when we get priority access to the tracking and data relay satellites that we use to send video and audio to and from the space station. Uh, we will have occasional uh, dropouts either due to what's known as blockage. So there's those antennas pointing uh, at the satellites with some piece of the station in the way um, or occasional handovers as the antennas point between the different satellites in geosynchronous orbit. So we will have a couple of minutes uh, coming up where we'll lose that video communication, uh, but we'll get it back pretty quickly. Uh, meanwhile, the crew getting told to turn on their sublimators. Um, those just uh, rely on physics to help cool the water that's going to be circulating inside of their suit, which again, they can control with the temperature uh, controller on their, on their spacesuits to help keep them cool during the spacewalk. So turning those on. Uh, also getting out two cable bundles with SMMLM1 or the service module MLM1 bundle uh, and also bundle number two. Um, so with Novitsky still in the airlock, he's going to hand those outside uh, to Dubrov, who's going to then secure them um, onto a handrail temporarily. Uh, then once both crew members make their way out, they'll turn on those helmet cams. Uh, again, making sure that they have their safety tethers in place first, as the crew members will always be tethered to the station at all times during the spacewalk. And then after that, they'll be able to start moving out to begin uh, all of their initial tasks. Again, uh, one of the first ones we're going to tackle is the uh, is to finish mating an Ethernet cable, a data cable that was routed during a previous spacewalk uh, to help integrate the, the U.S. segment uh, of the station with the newly arrived MLM. Uh, that'll be a redundant path uh, providing uh, data for any future payloads and also a redundant data path for the European robotic arm. So in this diagram, you can see the, the Ethernet cable connector plate. They're going to be moving down there uh, to install that uh, and integrate MLM additionally. We'll have another patch cable that'll run between uh, the, the new laboratory module and the service module, and that'll get installed a little bit later on today's spacewalk. Again, this is just one of uh, almost a dozen spacewalks that are planned to continue to integrate MLM into the station and prepare for all of its operations. They were able uh, during the spacewalk last week uh, to successfully connect all of the power uh, that's going to integrate MLM into the station's power system. Um, previously, it was being powered by some temporary feeds from the service module, um, but now with these in place, uh, they'll be able to access uh, the electrical uh, power generated by the station's large solar arrays, um, with that being fed directly to their systems. Um, so that was done successfully. I still have a couple of data uh, cable tasks for this one, and also going to be integrating today uh, some of the TV, the video systems between MLM and the Russian service module, uh, along with the uh, the core's automated rendezvous antennas, uh, those used for the Progress spacecraft as they come up and dock to the space station automatically. Um, they, uh, an active system on the progress, uh, basically talks to a passive system on board the station. Uh, the cable is going to tie the MLM and the, the service module systems together uh, for visiting vehicles that are that are heading up um, to the multi-purpose laboratory um, or the future uh, Russian node module uh, that's scheduled to slate 
uh, that's slated to arrive a little bit later this year. And that way they'll be able to use uh, the core system inside the service module up until uh, they get to what's called station keeping. So just before the final approaches uh, and then they'll hand over to the, the core's antennas on board MLM. But meanwhile, back at, back at our spacewalk, it now looks like uh, Oleg Nowitzki making his way out. So with both outside, we'll now uh, stand by and hopefully get those helmet cameras in the not too distant future. We'll be able to bring you in to look over their shoulders as they work. And again, now outside, the crew members are going to be splitting up um, to, to go off and start their respective tasks. Uh, Gennady, could you repeat your ask? Uh, Nowitzki's going to install the cable carrier for all of the, uh, the cables that they're going to be routing on a handrail. Um, and then turn on the IS there in the middle position. Yes, it's in the middle position. Okay, EV1, EV2 as well uh, has the uh, cold uh, hot control, uh, control in the middle position. Yes, I see the arrow. I am turning it in the direction of the flywheel. Copy. Actually, in about a minute and a half, there will be an LOS. It's an, ex it's an expected one. Alex Peter, uh, cold, hot, candle. Notable. Everyone is on one. Notable. Cable bundle uh, is on the translational handrail 303. Artem, yeah, right, is it uh, okay if I secure it for tightness by hand? Yes, that will be sufficient. Copy. Oleg, if it's not too much trouble, uh, could you uh, move the crew log bag uh, with the translational handrails to Peter, uh, bring it to Peter? Okay. As far as I understand, I need to free up the uh, tether from the bundle. Okay. Yes, that is exactly the case. So you can secure the um, tether either on the Okape handle or on the translation of handrail, but put, uh, secure both the hooks on that handrail. Peter, uh, did you rotate Bacadol? Yes, I rotated Bacadol. Copy. And then translate to handrail 6038, and in about a minute, we're going to have sunrise. Copy. I secured one uh, tether. Yes, and um, maneuver the crew back out. You can put it on the translational handrail, and Peter is going to take it when he starts translating on Strela. And we're going to have an LOS, as I mentioned previously, Oleg, after you uh, maneuver the crew back out, translate to the Ethernet uh, reel. Okay, over the operator post. Yes, over the operator post. And Peter, you perform the photography of the two antennas of the cargo vehicle. And we're going to be uh, looking, uh, looking forward to your photography, uh, photographs, and your reports. So there are several payloads here. So we will come back, take a look. So my visual inspection, uh, there, there's no damage on the antenna and the reflector. As soon as uh, the sunrise 
After the sunrise, I can give more details. So on the right side, copy. Copy, Peter. Uh, very large, interf major interference. I confirm. I confirm the calm is getting worse. Antenna on the right side. No damage. Copy. And as mentioned previously, we're in that gap now where we're going to lose video communication with the station for a couple of minutes. We'll look to pick that up uh, within the next five minutes. For now, though, both crew members, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, outside of the Poise module, already moving off into their first task. Uh, Novitsky EV-1, he's in the suit with the red stripes. Um, right now is securing a cable carrier with some of the different cables that they're going to be routing and connecting today on a handrail. Uh, meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, in the suit with the blue stripes, uh, is taking some photos of the currently docked uh, Progress MS-17 um, or the 78P Progress vehicle. Um, he's taking pictures of a couple of the antennas. Um, they'll be taking photos of quite a bit of their work today. All of this just gets sent back down to teams on the ground for additional review. Uh, once they're done with these initial tasks, uh, they're immediately going to jump in um, to routing the Ethernet cable, the data cable, to help integrate, uh, further integrate the multipurpose laboratory module with the U.S. segment of the station. Uh, low light. The sun is shining from the other side. Okay, copy. We will be standing by for now until the sun rises a little bit. So I secured this with the hook and with adjustable tether. Copy, Alex. And getting our first views from the helmet cameras. Uh, this one. I activated the camera. Copy. Taking photographs. When we're still having the, the spotty connection with our video. We'll look for that to lock up solidly in the next couple of minutes. But getting the first views from the helmet cameras, um, it looks like we did have a bit of an audible with the numbers. Um, and you're going to see the number 20 um, in the bottom right corner of the helmet cam on Oleg Novitsky. He's wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes in his EV-1 today. Uh, and then Pyotr Dubrov uh, will look for his helmet camera. That'll have the number 22 in the bottom corner of the um, cargo vehicle antennas. Хорошо. Okay. Спасибо. Thank you. But as of right now, we're already 22 minutes and counting up into today's spacewalk, which did begin at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern. Um, as they opened the, the hatch on the poise module and started making their way outside. Uh, both crew members already outside. The helmet camera is powered up. And once we get video back, we should be able to start looking over their shoulders. Um, already moving into their first task, uh, Pyotr Dubrov uh, working to take some photos of antennas on the Progress spacecraft currently docked to the station uh, while Oleg Novitsky finishes uh, securing a, a cable carrier on one of the handrails just outside of poise before he moves over to start uh, getting the uh, the cable reel of that uh, Ethernet data cable that's going to connect um, the U.S. segment with the new labor multipurpose laboratory module. And then getting our video back again, you can tell this is Novitsky by the red stripe that you can see on his spacesuit is EV-1 today.
Я достаточно близко подошел к антеннам. I have approached antennas uh, quite closely, copying. And the LED is blinking on glitter, and you are recording. Yes, the, LED, the red LED is blinking, uh, and actually has been blinking. So can I take uh, videos, the imagery from here? Yes. Uh, you can. Yes, exactly from this particular distance. Uh, we need that as a backup. Okay, copy. I'll do it. Let me secure myself in a more comfortable position. Copying. And right now we're continuing to look over the shoulder of EV-1 today. Uh, it's Oleg Novitsky. The team's working to also get the uh, helmet cam activated for Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2. We did get a quick glimpse at him. Uh, right now we can see uh, Novitsky station right at the top of the, the Strela arm, uh, which has been used previously to help uh, maneuver cosmonauts and also payloads around during spacewalks. Uh, go get the crew bag, and um, then I'm going to go to install the handrail. Okay, YouTube. Uh, videos of both antennas from as close as possible, uh, and from mid-range, yes, as close as I could get to, uh, and as far as, as close as I could get to the antennas, I secured my tether to 6038, and I got as close as possible to the um, uh, as close as possible to the antennas. Okay, and also then go to uh, the translation handrail. Yeah, Oleg already has the bundle for you. Okay, thank you, Oleg. So I'm going to secure it now to Peter and to the reflector. Okay, thank you, Oleg. You can turn the camera off. Make sure the LED is no longer blinking. No longer on, and go to the uh, and go get the Ethernet bundle, Ethernet cable bundle. Okay, copy. And now another short handover before we get that video back. So again, both crew members outside. Uh, finishing up a couple of quick photo tasks um, over on that currently docked Progress cargo craft. Uh, they're going to start moving out now to secure a couple of different cable bundles. Um, EV-1, Oleg Novitsky in the, the suit with the red stripes is going to be moving to um, release and then begin routing an Ethernet cable uh, that was previously put in place on a Russian spacewalk. Uh, this is a data cable that, again, is it's going to provide a redundant path for uh, any payloads hosted on MLM in the future. Um, also providing a redundant path uh, for the European robotic arm uh, that arrived on board uh, the MLM uh, once it arrived at station. Uh, it's going to be a large robotic arm, um, all told about 11 meters in length, so about 33 feet in length. And it's going to be used uh, very similar to how the station's Canada Arm 2 arm is used, um, moving experiment payloads around or any other large elements, um, transferring payloads in and out of airlocks, transporting crew members, cosmonauts uh, who are working during spacewalks, um, and then also providing a camera platform to do external inspections. Um, so this uh, Ethernet cable is going to provide a redundant path for commanding that, um, along with, again, any future payloads. So. Uh, that was a task that was originally planned during the spacewalk last week uh, and was deferred to this week after the crew uh, did successfully get all of the power cables connected, routed, and checked out. All right, and we are back now with live views. Again, you're looking right now uh, just at the Poisk module. Uh, that's Oleg Novitsky in the suit with all the red stripes on it in view. He's going to start making his way now to that Ethernet cable. Uh, meanwhile, just below him, and behind the Strela boom is EV2, that's Pyotr Dubrov. Okay, I am securing it.
Так, второй карабин на утеч. Хук. Номер 2 на ОТА. Да. Да, именно так. Пострелять переход. Yes, translate along Charlotte to Pechao. And we're just about 31 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, the crew member have crew members have uh, completed installing that cable carrier uh, on a handrail, and they did that photo survey of the antennas on the Progress spacecraft. Uh, so again, they're they're going to be splitting up at this point. Um, EV1 Oleg Novitsky is going to move off to uh, get the cable reel of that Ethernet cable. Um, he's going to be routing that down uh, to a patch panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, and he'll be temporarily stowing the reel um, up by the Strela arm where they were just previously. I uh, Meanwhile, Dubrov's going to move back and retrieve what's known as a gap spanner bundle. He's going to be installing a number of handrails um, along the multi-purpose laboratory module um, to just help with any future translation or movement outside of the lab module um, during future spacewalks. I started my translation along Strela. And now getting our first look over the shoulder of Piotr Dubrov. Again, you're going to be able to tell that you're looking through his camera by that small 22 in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, he's continuing to move along the Strela boom right now. And one of his first major tasks is going to go and retrieve uh, the gap spanner, essentially long handrails from the airlock, uh, to begin installing those in the external part of the station. I have uh, arrived at the Ethernet reel. I have uh, secured myself to uh, the handrails. Okay, you can now secure the reel and start removing it. Um, Artem, what are we going to do with the safety tethers? The safety tethers uh, we are going to leave for now if they're not going to be in the way. And after we're done working with the reel, then we're going to attempt to remove this uh, tether and use it to secure the Seul uh, to Strela. If it's not going to come off easily, then we're going to jettison it along with the reel. So is it going to be sufficient if I secure it here on the handrail? Yes. Copying. I got to the, I arrived at the grapple fixture.
I have removed the safety tether. Copy. And now we're, I'm going to start uh, removing, uh, rotating and removing the wing nut. I hope it works easier than it did the previous time. I think it will be easier now. I have translated to PHO. Copy. Pressure on. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, go to the handrail 05. A copy, I confirm. I wanted to tell you right away that please do not hurry. Uh, it's going to be a long EVA. Please uh, 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 face yourselves. Copy. The wing nut uh, rotated to, to a certain position easily, and then now it got um, stuck, so I'm going to have to use a range. Okay, copy. It was expected. True. Thirty-seven minutes into today's spacewalk, again you can tell that they've already gone their separate ways. Uh, EV1 Oleg Novitsky already arrived at that Ethernet cable. He was a few minutes early on his timeline, and so he's first uh, releasing that, which has been temporarily stowed on a handrail. He's going to remove the reel and then begin to route it towards a connector patch down on the multi-purpose laboratory module. No, I think I'm fine for now. Okay, copy. Then secure it uh, with your red, and then you can remove the um, wire tie. Copy. Will do. Right now, we're not receiving a video. Okay. Now we're, we're watching, we see the video again. Artem, uh, the wing nut is uh, loose. I uh, backed it out completely. You can probably see it, but the uh, little stop wedge uh, is not, uh, I'm not able to extract it. Do you see it? Yes, I see it. That means the latch is broken. Okay, Oleg, we're going to follow a bed. Um, we're, we're, we're going to unwire it. Uh, we're going to use the pessimistic option. We're going to unwind it and place. Yes, uh, Ethernet reel has three bolts. Uh, three bolts that need to be uh, that need a wrench. Okay. I see it. So you will need to back them out, and then it will, will be able. To, you will be able to get to the internal components. Okay. And what about? And there's nowhere to secure the cap to to cap the cap to uh, in here, or is there some internal component that's securing it in place? Could you repeat your last, Alex? The cover that we are going to remove after we take those screws out, is it attached with anything? It's going to be attached with a cable. So with that cable, copy. And when we rem remove it and open, when we secure it separately, we're going to secure it separately before we retrieve the cable. Copy. 
I'll start with this cruise. And I, meanwhile, am trying to install the handrail and no joy. I have extended it as much as I could up to the stop point, and I still can't attach it. Piotr, let's uh, do it this way. We are not rushing you, so let's try and just install it in a different configuration. All right, I'll give it a couple of more tries. And I do need to put some force into pulling it out. Oh, yay, bingo. Got it. That's really good. So, all right, I got it. And Piotr, take a breather. No rush. All right, and I will work with the swing nuts for now. Swing out for now. Oleg, go ahead, Moscow. Try and pull that wing nut, like with a lot of force. I, well, that's no, it's not going to work for whatever reason. It kind of got unscrewed itself uh, almost completely. So, it's probably the... Do you still want me to pull it? Once, very, with a lot of force. But if it's not going to help, then don't do anything with this lock. Well, it's kind of wobbly completely. And whether I pull on it or I don't pull on it, and Anton, have a look. Uh, is there any way I can screw it back in? No. So, it's probably... You can, you can just continue removing the cover because um, the um, screw and the carvings are probably... The thread is probably damaged. All right, and I thought we were going, it was all going so well. And I'll try to work with the handrail. I can do, use 4320. Is that a good one? Yes. And this is Mission Control Houston. So you may have noticed an increase in the quality of our helmet cameras as we're now getting the HD views from both spacewalkers. Uh, this is a view uh, just over the helmet of EV-1, Oleg Novitsky, who's right now working to try and release that cable reel well, with the Ethernet cable inside. You can see he's working at handrail 6008. You can see that bright orange. That's how the, the cosmonauts are able to tell um, just where each item is attached. To attach um, the wire um, with the orange wire. There is an orange wire on this cover. That's what you can use. I see that. But that's a leer. Well, we are completely going off course, like not per the original scenario. All right. I have secured the handrail. 4320. And now, Piotr, thank you. You can move and start working with handrail 4300. I am installing it. 
So you just uh, you have just unscrewed it, right? All right, it's free now, and the lock has been closed. So the trigger is closed. And meanwhile, uh, we're now looking through the helmet camera of Pyotr Dubrov EV2. Uh, he's in the process of installing uh, so what you'll hear called a couple of different things, now being called gap spanners on today's spacewalk, essentially just long handrails. Uh, there's uh, several of these uh, that are going to get installed today. Um, three that were carried over from the previous spacewalk getting installed outside of the multipurpose laboratory module. Feeding hole and the markings are all aligned so everything's looking good there. And I will see if the threads are aligned. So Dubrov moving along in his timeline able to start getting those gap spanners, those long handrails installed. Meanwhile, Novitsky still working to uh, try and troubleshoot uh, an issue he's having releasing the cable reel uh, from a handrail on uh, to begin routing that Ethernet cable down to the MLM. So, I have secured it with the Lyrka. Uh, it's not very secure, but it'll do. Okay, use a, use a RET, and we are going to secure the cable with the adjustable tether. Currently, I am I have the large RET hook on it. How copy, Artyom? Come again. So the cover of the reel is uh, secured with the large hook of the red. Copy, thank you. Now screw out uh, screw number three and remove the cover. Copy. Artyom. 4320 has been successfully installed. I am going to now install. I will translate to the platform and I am starting working with 4300. Copy. All right, the three bolts are free. I have unscrewed them. Copy. Oleg, what do you think? What's this slack in the cable? How many meters? Let me stow the tools and try and estimate. Okay, and now the transport tether, the one that you have. Could you please attach it to the MRM handrails? <laughs> Will do. And back looking now over Pyotr Dubrov's shoulder as he's continuing to install those gap spanners, those handrails. You did hear him call down 4320 is installed. That's just the number on the handrail. No, Next up will be handrail 4300 that he'll lock in. That'll be the third, the first one, 4005 already installed. So we can see him just attaching a, a safety tether to it. We have about, um, the slack is like about two and a half, three bay lengths. Okay, so now there are two connectors that are attached with a wire. Do you see them? I do. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Oleg Nowitzki continuing to troubleshoot with that cable reel. Uh, they ran into some issues getting the reel off of the handrail, then looked at potentially removing the handrail to bring the, the bundle with it, which also caused a few issues. So at this point, he's removed the cover uh, from the Ethernet cable reel, um, and now we'll look to uh, just remove the cable itself and leave the original reel in place. Right now we're 50 minutes, five zero minutes into today's spacewalk. The wire tie? Yes, that is right. And when you go with that wire for the last time, try and keep the wire as close to the cable and attach the other side as close to the connector as possible. Artyom, I didn't quite understand what you are saying. Okay, first of all, those connectors need to be freed from the reel. Then you take those connectors and you attach them with your wire tie or with the wire, the same wire tie that is currently on the reel, whatever is more convenient for you. And then afterwards, okay, hold on, just uh, stand by. There is a wire tie on the side of the MLM. And I don't see which way it goes. Copy. In two minutes, we are probably going to go LOS for about five minutes. Well, maybe, maybe I'll figure it out before that. Before that. Okay, that's a very narrow passage here. I, um, I, I basically have to crawl through here, and everything's catching on me and grabbing. All right, I got through. A little over 52 minutes into today's spacewalk. We did lose that video connectivity again. We'll be getting that back uh, in just about five minutes. Again, we should only have a couple of short gaps throughout the spacewalk today as uh, during any time we're in a spacewalk with astronauts or cosmonauts outside the station, we go into what's called Tedris Critical, uh, able to uh, get priority access on those tracking and data relay satellites. Well, it's... Uh Meanwhile, this is a look inside the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, talking to our spacewalking cosmonauts today, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, their third spacewalk together. Right now, Dubrov continuing to install gap spanners or long handrails uh, on the outside, uh, two of three already in, just waiting for confirmation of the third. Uh, meanwhile, EV-1 Oleg Novitsky is still at that Ethernet cable reel, uh, trying to troubleshoot it. He removed the cover from the reel and is now trying to work to just remove the cable itself, leaving the, the reel housing in place uh, so he can start routing it down to a connection panel on the multipurpose laboratory module uh, to finish off one of the tasks from just last week. So they're telling me, unfortunately, we would not be able to fold or retract those antennas. That's a shame. But they are, we're basically done with them. They're no longer needed. So if you damage them, that's fine. Just make sure they don't damage your suit. So you can touch them if anything, so don't worry about that. Okay? Artyom, what's, uh, what do you advise about the cables? So, how do you want me to secure them here? I have an idea. Why don't you take the connectors that you have freed and tied and um, make a, wire, uh, a cable bay with that wire? Uh, 
Okay. The calm is super unstable. So the idea is to just uh, by hand make the bay just the same as SMMLM1, which is on UKP. And that's how you can secure it. Oleg, Piotr. Oleg, Piotr. So where are we? What What was the last that you copied? Well, honestly, we haven't heard much. Okay, copy. You start saying something, and then, then there is an LOS, and that's the end of it. Artyom, let us try and do it on our own, so we'll try and form a kind of a ring, because we'll have to, because it's really hard to go through without untying this whole bundle. So maybe we can actually retract it from the reel. That is actually what I was about to suggest. Okay, that's good. Let's uh, try. Okay, the latch is closed. Everything's um, looking good here. Copy. Forty three zero zero. This handrail has been installed successfully. Copy. Uh, I'm only hand tightening this cruise though. Piotr. Yeah, go ahead. Piotr. Oleg will probably have to wait. I uh, will be standing by. by. Could you see H3, H4, H3, H4 connectors on the hill? Uh, let me see. Let, let me check. I can see the con some connectors, but I don't see what number they are. Right. You need to move to 40... To 4003, that's the handrail that you need to use. Okay, I see um, I'm on handrail 4003. Okay, and now. If on the right side there is like a tiny, tiny writing in black, so it's it's basically no, not that connector. The next one. Uh, around, go around to the right. Well, there aren't any handrails there. No, there are no handrails. There are no sharp edges or anything uh, other. Well, use your glisser camera. Uh, you don't need to go there, but use your glisser camera. Please do not touch anything there. Copy. I will only use the MLI to hold on to. Um, if you can reach that connector with your hand, did you find it? I don't see any numbers on them. I do see that it's a connector. It's under um, antenna. Four numbers, numbers X, but I don't see any number, anything that's written on the connector, and I, and it's 
and my um, tether is too short. Okay. So get the glycer uh, get the glycer for now. Let me secure myself here. And we just passed the hour mark into today's spacewalk. Uh, right now, uh, both crew members are going to be linking up. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, still trying to work with that. A uh, stubborn cable bundle with the Ethernet cable that they're going to be routing down to the multi-purpose laboratory module, uh, providing a redundant path for payload commanding and also commanding to the European robotic arm. Uh, meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov has uh, finished his task to install three gap spanners or handrails on the outside and is now going to make his way up to join up with Novitsky as they route this cable down. Uh, to a connection panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module. So uh, we'll, we'll get an update shortly on just where they are in the timeline. Um, they were planned to have those uh, handrails finished by about the one hour, 20 minute mark. So ahead there, uh, a little behind on the ethernet routing um, as they are still working to get the cable out of the reel itself, which they were unable to uh, remove from its Tempsto location on that handrail. Okay. I have to hold on to that uh, MLI. So I'm honestly using like two or three fingers to hold on to. Right, it's a very challenging spot. So I have, this is Oleg, secured with two tethers. And the Ethernet uh, reel together with the cap are secured with wire ties, one uh, and one, and the other one is uh, on the large red hook. And am I go to translate? Yes, you are. Петр, so you are taking pictures of the uh, antenna uh, and the antenna for AUVK, right? And can you can you lift up the camera a little bit, just a little bit, probably, well, as far as you can reach. So if the cameras are working, that if the camera is working, that's as good as it gets. Uh, I, that's as far as I can reach. Okay, can you try and move a little bit to the left? Okay, I have retrieved. Copy, Oleg. Let's go back to platform 17 and get ready to accept the Ethernet cable from Oleg. Oleg, Piotr, if you need to take a break, please do take it. Copy. I will try and continue moving. Copy, Oleg. Sounds good. All right, well, Pyotr Dubrov just there was taking some photos of an electrical connector, and now he's gotten the go 
to make his way over to join up with Oleg Davitsky, who at this point has gotten that Ethernet cable out of the reel and is now going to start making his way down. So they're going to route this Ethernet cable to a connector patch panel. Um, they're going to be attaching some cable clamps to handrails along the way to hold it in place. Um, and they're going to eventually route this all the way down to the multipurpose laboratory module to install it again. This is an Ethernet. It's a data cable providing a redundant path for payloads, payload commanding payload data, and also for the European robotic arm uh, external to the NAUCA module. First of all, please secure the wire tie to the to 4025 handrail support. Copy. As uh, close to the body of uh, MLM, um, what is the number? It's uh, 4025. Uh, so closer to the outer side. Yes, that's right. Copy. Okay. And we are one hour, seven and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. Right now, continuing to look just over the shoulder of Russian cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov as he works to make his way to link up uh, with Oleg Novitsky as they can uh, now continue routing and then eventually connecting uh, this Ethernet cable down to uh, the multipurpose laboratory module, the MLM. Dubrov already successfully installed three of the handrails on the outside of the of the module. It's going to assist uh, in this and any future spacewalks. Um, he'll have one additional uh, that could be installed later on on the forward-facing side of MLM uh, when the crew members go to install that and a, a passive um, platform w with attachments for future payloads. Uh, but for now, they're they're on to. Uh, finish routing this Ethernet cable. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, had a, some issues getting the cable reel itself off the handrail and then was unable to remove the handrail also. So they were, uh, he was directed to remove the cover, uh, got the cable out of the reel itself, and then began the routing down. Uh, this is an Ethernet cable connecting uh, the station's US segment with the MLM. And they're going to be able to use this as uh, just another path for getting uh, data and commanding to payloads and also for the European robotic arm. So uh, that now on their, uh, their primary focus right now is the crew is going to work together to route that down to a patch panel. Um, they had planned to have this mostly routed by about an hour and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, so in about 11 minutes from now. Um, so not too far behind so far. Um, and then once they get this completed, uh, they'll be moving on to a, a couple of other cable routing tasks. Uh, the cable carrier for those has been temporarily stowed outside the airlock. That'll be coming up soon. But for now, one hour, nine and a half minutes into today's spacewalk, uh, the crew member is moving now to finish routing and then connecting this Ethernet cable. Oh, 
я напоминаю, что фал с подтягом не является заменой страховочных фалов. Так что страховочные фалы... I understand that the adjustable length tether is not a replacement for the safety tether. Okay, safety tethers are attached to handrails 4025 and 4026 adjustable tethering um, length tethers are attached to 4025. Oleg, yes, go ahead. We are observing your complicated translation maneuver. You are near handrail 1500, and there are cables there, including the Ethernet cables, and in that cable grip, you need to move it so that it is oriented toward the MLM. Okay, I understand. Still talking. We had a short break. I think we were LOS for a second. Okay, we are going to have the I'm coming into the installation on in 10 minutes. Yes, copy that. We, uh, what I'm seeing is that the valve is not attached security, securely. The only thing that's keeping it in place is the Velcro tape. Okay, copy that. Can you please go ahead and attach that? Okay, I'm thinking maybe the adjustable length tether, adjustable tether. Okay, let's do the adjustable tether first. And then, um, because this is a small valve, we don't want to waste it with a adjustable tether. I was thinking maybe the red. Yes, that could work. In any case, we're going to be putting this away into the crew lock bag. Anyway, why? Maybe we should reinstall it. Before moving away from this work zone, maybe I will put that back in place, or do you want me to remove it completely? Peter, is my understanding correct that you are uh, talking about the cable um, that has the high frequency connectors, 17-7? Yes, it's covered with the Velcro. Okay, once we mate the connectors, they are going to stick out from the frame, and we will not be able to cover them. Okay, so you want me to put away that valve completely and take it back with me, correct? Yes, so this is my answer for now, but I will look into this and make sure. Okay.
Oleg, did you move the cable? Yes, I have. We copy. So far, we are moving uh, in the correct direction. Yes, this is a complicated point here for us because you will need to make sure that the cables are not twisting. Be very aware of that. Okay, we will try to avoid that. Yes, let's try. I can see your uh, the bottoms of your feet. Looks like you're nearby. Yes, I'm close. Peter. Go ahead. Since you're seeing Oleg already, you need to start preparing connectors 174 and 1741. Um, you need to prepare them for the Ethernet cables to accept that from Oleg. You will need to cut the ties. Okay, I see that from above. Uh, uh, to make sure that the tie is out of the way, I will go ahead and remove it. Yes, we copy that. Are you receiving the video? Yes, we are. Good. So I was thinking maybe put the cable here. Can you see that? Would that be okay? The Ethernet cable goes under the power cable. Yes, that, that is exactly how it's supposed to be. The one that's right to the left of you, right directly in front of you. Yes, I copy. So I will try. Oh, another question. There's another cable here outside of the handle. Should I attach it also? This is the cable that's tied to the connector, is that correct? I don't know, I can't see. Okay. In theory, you should have the connectors that you used uh, during the previous CVAs and you used wire ties to tie them. Now, these are the orange ones. That's This one goes straight through the handle. If it's the orange one, then I think it is from MRM 1. No, it's near the two handrails. Okay, Oleg, don't worry about this. Don't waste your time with that. Peter. Uh, we have a recommendation for the ML MLI. If the connectors are in the way and don't allow us to cover the MLI flap, then do not put them in. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and grab them. Yes, I concur. Just to be safe, put them in the crew lock bag because if we connect those connectors, they are going to stick out and we will have a hard time seeing that. Just in a few minutes, we're 
going to enter the orbital night. Copy that. I have attached the cover for now to keep it out of the way. Copy. It's getting warm in the sun. Yeah, it's nice. Man, we're a little over one hour, 20 like minutes into today's again. spacewalk, continuing to get views uh, from both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov. Uh, this is a view from Dubrov's helmet camera. Right now, he's just securing um, some MLI, some multi-layer insulation uh, over the connector panel. Uh, found on the Nauka module. Meanwhile, Oleg Novitsky continuing to make his way down with that Ethernet cable, securing it with uh, hand clamps on a, a couple of the handrails on the way down. And once he arrives, he'll be able to, to connect that Ethernet cable and complete that okay. task for today's so spacewalk. But uh, continuing to move along, uh, we're now just a little bit behind the timeline. We'll get a, a readout of uh, just where they are uh, for today's so spacewalk in a little bit after they finish this next one, task. Yeah, uh, originally planned to, to last just under six and a half hours so far today, uh, but already successfully installed uh, three gap spanners or handrails outside of the MLM, um, and then just working now to finish routing this Ethernet cable before they move on. Uh, to a number of other cable routing tasks that are just going to continue to integrate and prepare MLM for operations on board the station. I am just taking it easy working, just preparing my little connectors. Okay. We copy that. Still, let's just take a minute to catch our breath. Yes, sure. So, from the handrail 2123, we will need to go down to handrail 4046, right? Uh, um, 4006, correct. And there you already have the wire tie installed. Okay, I can see that. I copy. Then you will be moving to handrail 4005 the one that we were working with earlier today, and you will be in the area of plate 17. Then handrail 45, Pyotr has already attached the wire tie there, and we will be mating the connectors then there. Understood. Pyotr, if you have a spare minute, and also if you wish, to continue, you can go to plate 17 and prepare it for stowing in the kit. That's a connector 17.3, 17.5, and 17.6. Copy. Are, are you guys getting enough uh, light? Because the video that we're seeing is very dark. I personally have enough light. Me too. Okay, copy that. So let's breathe for a minute or so, and then we can continue. Anton. I feel that I'm getting warm because of the sun, and my temperature keeps going up. Okay, I do not insist. It's up to you. Um, you know better how you feel. Okay, got it.
one hour, 25 minutes into today's spacewalk, the 50th Russian EVA in support of the International Space Station. Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov making their way towards each other. Uh, Oleg Novitsky bringing that Ethernet cable down to the patch panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module, where Pyotr Dubrov has removed the protective multi-layer insulation and is just preparing it uh, for the connection. Novitsky securing the cable along the way at uh, several handrails using wire ties and clamps uh, just to secure it leaving enough slack for him to continue routing it to get it down to the connector panel. And then once they're done with that, uh, they'll be able to move back to the airlock and get another cable carrier where they'll be uh, then using another patch cable uh, for the ethernet connecting uh, the multi-purpose laboratory module to the Russian service module. Um, and they'll also have two cables uh, linking the two modules television or their video systems and then one linking uh, the Coors P antenna feeder units um, on the service module and the MLM uh, together. Again, Coors used for uh, the automated rendezvous and docking for Russian visiting spacecraft, the Progress and the Soyuz, delivering cargo and crew respectively. It's a little harder to work with these little traps here. They are tighter within the rings. It's very, very difficult to pull out the string. I, I have it in the cable holder 2123. Okay, we copy. Thank you, Oleg. Yes. The fact that uh, the strings are covered in this protective substance, it's actually worse, makes it worse. Okay, how many connectors have you done? Fully, completely, fully only one. Okay, copy that. For the lyrical clips, these this strings are very stiff, covered in this protective material. So trying to pull this string through the ring is tough. So it takes a lot of effort. Can't take it off because of the ring. Copy. Uh, 
Okay, I have reached uh, handrail 4005. Okay, copy that. Now, uh, cable 4006 needs to be tied. Okay. Let me find it. Now, for the slack, for the coil, do you have enough? Did you try to unspool it? I have not yet. Why? Do I need to? No, if, you, if the length is sufficient, then don't worry about it. Oh, we'll just have extra, I guess, in your plate 17. Well, my apologies. Okay, I have tied it to 4006. Copy that. Now start translating towards the now. Be careful around the antennas. Difficult there. Okay, I will move. Maybe I'll give him the reel. Now, the plate is somewhere nearby, right, Peter? I just don't know whether I should move anywhere where the antenna is close. Maybe I should be able to hand it over like this. Yes, so I'm thinking we don't need both of you in that spot. The, the cover. We need to probably tie it together with the cable, or uh, I don't know what would be the best way for you to do it. Okay. I have a lot of interference. What do you want me to do with the cover? Okay, we have two options for the cover. Either remove it from the cable or try to place it near the handrail where we have the slack for the Ethernet cable. Which option do you think is best? To be honest, it's difficult to answer. So we need to see the place where it's connected. Maybe I could... Um, unspool one loop. Okay. So let's get to that place first. Wait, actually, before we mate them, we need to decide what we're doing because if after that we won't be able to remove the lid. The, yes, you're right. I think you could put it away with the lid. Okay. Let's tie the lid. Near handrail, 4025. Okay, I have a hard time seeing. Also, I'm worried that if I try to put the lid back, it may slide off because it's not really a good attachment system here. I understand your concern, and I agree with it. Maybe we can pull the tether through the middle. Why do we need to do that? Okay. 
Okay, maybe we can find the hole in the lid. Okay, so let's get to the plate first and put the cable in. Secure it with a wire tie to handrail 4025. Then we'll take a look at the slack and decide what we do next. Okay, let's try that. Sure, let's try. I will remove the kit, the bag from the adjustable tether, and then I will try to monitor from this side as well. Yes, we copy. Wait, we are about to go LOS on S-band. And right now we're a little over one hour, 36 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, both cosmonauts have now linked up with each other at that connection panel down on the multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, you're hearing some chatters. They were figuring out how to just kind of get the uh, extra slack out of the cable as they get it over to the connection panel. Also working to figure out what we're going to do with that cover from the original Ethernet cable bundle reel. Um, that's the metal circle you can see there. Um, the initial planning for the spacewalk uh, had called for the reel to be jettisoned uh, off of the okay, Strela boom by hand by the cosmonauts. Yeah. Um, but now they're, they're figuring out what exactly to do with the reel. They'll want to make sure that they have it secured. Okay, um, that real cover before time. they uh, we'll finish all of the connections with the Ethernet cable. Um, but we are continuing to move okay, through with this Ethernet cable routing and connection task. Uh, again, we're about one hour, 37 minutes into today's spacewalk. Both Novitsky and Dubrov now at the connection panel. Uh, and right now they're going to work to get this Ethernet cable connected figure out what to do with the cover from that uh, that cable reel and then move on to their other tasks for today's spacewalk. Leave the wire inside the rings. And once more, going into a quick handover, so the communications uh, antenna on the station transitioning from one tracking and data relay satellite to another. Uh, so we'll get that video back momentarily. Again, both of the crew members, Oleg Novitsky, EV-1 in the red stripes, and Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2 in the suit with the blue stripes, now uh, linked up together. They're working to do this final routing and then connecting of this Ethernet cable into the a patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, all told, they were initially timelined to have this task completed about one hour and 45 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, and as we're one hour, 38 minutes, uh, we may still end up a couple of minutes behind, uh, but the crew did run into some issues getting that cable reel uh, with the ethernet cable inside off of its temporarily, uh, temporary stowage location. So uh, Novitsky was able to just remove the cable and the the real cover to bring the cable down along with them. Uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do uh, with that cable cover after they finish getting everything routed and connected. Again, it was initially uh, the entire real housing was set to be jettisoned, um, but uh, the large portion of it still attached and a handrail back uh, along the Russian segment, only the cover making its way all the way down uh, as we can now get a view back uh, over their shoulders. As we can see Pyotr Dubrov up there at the top of the screen, this is a view from Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera as they work to get this uh, Ethernet cable connected. Then we will have to unwind it. Let's follow the original plan. So next to the bundle, we're going to tie up that particular cover. First, 
uh, the attachment length is not going to be sufficient and it's not going to be very reliable. Well, it's going to be hanging on the cable. Yeah, it's hanging on the cable. But it's going to be on the way uh, when we're working with the panel. You see there's a, um, a handrail here, and if we uh, tie up this disc here in the area of the handrail, what is, uh, what about uh, near the handrail 3002? 3002, you're saying? What if we have to translate along that handrail? Well, we have another handrail next to it, 4320. Well, my recommendation is not to tie it to the handrail itself, but to the side over there. Inaudible. Interference. Inaudible. Our recommendation about handrail. I think it's uh, going to take uh, too much space. Yeah, it's going to be too much space. It's going to be taking up too much space here. Okay, I'll try to do something with it. Oh, and Peter, if it's difficult to remove the cover, then my recommendation would be to jettison it uh, along with all those flaps at the very end. Uh, the flap from uh, panel 17. Well, it can be removed. Uh, it can be brought to the. You um, can get to the connector. Right now, it's not secured. Correct. Well, it's secured. It's um, but still attached to the cable. The cable itself is secured by adjustable, so it's uh, uh, shaped like one uh, long tether. That's how this disc is secured. Okay, copy. I need to make sure I don't get all confused here.
One hour, 45 minutes into today's spacewalk. This is still a view uh, from EV-1, Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera. He's looking right at Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, for this spacewalk. So he works to get that Ethernet cable connected to the patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Here's a cable claim uh, on the bracket 4025. Over there on the corner, is it secured with anything? Not yet. It's secured to the bracket. Just the bracket for now. I need to add a tie down there. The one that it was secured with, the one where I put it, the one I put on 4005, I moved it closer to 4026. Well, it, it is needed there as well. Yes, I think we can remove that attachment from here and move it to the bracket where the cable is touching it and maybe tighten it in a way or route it in a way that it doesn't go along the handrail it will, so it can go along the uh, shell. I translated in between those. I squeezed by. Okay. Okay. Let me try. I can take it from you over here. You don't have to translate. I think it should be installed over here on the uh, bracket uh, because here is going to be in the way if we need to grab onto the handrail. Let me move it away. So it's going to be routed here, and it's not going to be in the way. Well, over here it will be. Okay, I think it needs a wire tie. Uh, it needs to, I think it needs to be routed further uh, to 4026. Okay, let me try it. In about a minute or a minute and a half, uh, the eclipse is going to be over. Copy. Talking about uh, cable and wire ties. I think that will place it a little bit to the side.
Can it be bent in this direction? Why not? I'm just asking. I I don't think I uh, I don't think it will be in the way. Well, don't tighten it too much so it doesn't have a very sharp bend in the cable. I think this way will work. Alex. Alex. Go ahead. А можешь, пожалуйста, на свою камеру поснимать, как Can you use your uh, camera to take the video how the uh, Cable routing path is um, looking right now, uh, pointing to the FGB using the glitter camera. Okay. So what? So starting from where Peter is located and to the FGB. So basically, from where you are located, turn to the left, and how it's going to. The FGB, just that particular section, you don't even have to translate too far. Okay. Let me uh, reattach my short tether. Uh, Henry 4025. So the slack is about slightly over one meter. Copy. I can translate to Oleg with this disk and hand it to him. I can give you the disk. This disk, I haven't uh, completed the uh, imagery. Peter, go ahead. Can you tie it next to maybe uh, four, uh, three, zero, zero next to uh, panel 17? Well, I can try. I'm not sure how much time it's going to take to figure out these cables. Can all of you of help? Uh, to work on panel 17. Most likely, if we get there together, we will just be in each other's way, more than helping each other. It is large. Well, we can actually leave it on the cable just floating around, it's not going to go anywhere on, from this cable. We just need to tighten up the slack. Oleg, if it's on the cable, if we leave if we leave the um, disc on the cable, we can move it direct uh, in the direction of the uh, handrail uh, toward the panel. There is nowhere to tie it down to, but it's not going to be in the way of any activity. I 
I think let's, let's remove the cover. We're not going to be guessing anymore. We'll remove the cover and then uh, we'll uh, make a decision what to do with it. Okay. I put the camera away. Copy. So what did what did you decide? Uh, we're going to take the cover. Uh, you can remove it, and what we're going to do with it, we're going to think about it for now. And how do we secure it on the wire tie? Yes, secure it to the wire tie on your adjustable tether or on your red. Okay, sounds good. I'm I'm ready with the adjustable tether. Okay, let me loosen it up a little. I'm not able to translate over there. Okay, I got it. Great. I, I'm going to pull out the cable from this disc. This shape is sort of tricky. Okay, I got it. Hold on, I didn't route it the right way. Yes, I think it's the right way. Okay. I I thought that's where the link the long part is routed. Okay, we remove the disc. Okay, copy. Such an amazing item. And that's where the fine saucer legends come from. Let me catch my breath. Uh, Peter, Peter, uh, you're working the entire eclipse. Uh, do you need to catch your breath? Well, yes, I need a, a minute or two to catch my breath. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and catch your breath. I am going to uh, tie up this uh, bundle neatly. Oh, I have a request for you. From your from your location, can you assess how the SM MLM two bundle is going to go? How the translation path is going to uh, look like the path for cable routing?
Так, сейчас вкратце не напомню, откуда она будет идти. Well, can you remind me uh, briefly where we're going to have to translate from the gap center? Uh, going along the circular handrail from the small diameter cone. And then you're going to get to the uh, target and then to get to the antenna that's located along uh, point one. Okay, I see it. I think we'll be able to uh, translate uh, to the handrail that Peter installed. So from the circular handrail to the handrail that Peter installed. I think the distance is not going to be that, major, that big a deal. Also behind that target there will be a circular handrail and then another a circular handrail, and then another one closer. The handrail that was installed by Peter. So we're uh, going to get behind the uh, target. In that case, you're better off uh, translating uh, head first. And get to handle for uh, 005. I think this particular path is going to be doable. So routing the cable, uh, if you're on the Estrella on the STU, uh, would that work, or do you need to translate along the handrails? No, I think it would be preferred uh, if you if the translation is along the circular handrails. Okay, uh, copy. Then we're not going to waste any time working with the cello during the translation path, and then uh, you would be translating along the circular handrails. Well, are you working or are you catching your breath? I think he is quietly. So you you gave you gave him a go to catch his breath, and he's working quietly. I am looking how we uh, can route the cables and con uh, make the connectors. I think the connector can go under the MLI flap. I am hoping we won't need to uh, cut a bunch of uh, slide wires to make the cable. I am ready to make connectors, uh, back up, connector back up forward to the connector on the cable. Okay, copy. A start. You can start. Okay, copy. The contact uh, field is looking good. Okay, let me before the inspection. So everything looks good. There's no FOD. Everything is fine near the socket. There's no FOD. Um, the key is here near the uh, sphere. Copy, then you can make the connectors there. There are four uh, Ethernet cables. I confirm. And we're a little over two hours, three minutes, and 45 seconds into today's spacewalk. We're right now looking through the helmet cam of Piotr Dubrov EV2 for today's operations. He's making that connection now of that now routed Ethernet cable to the patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Just prior to this, they were able to get that cable reel cover off and uh, the teams here on the ground still talking uh, the ultimate fate of that cable reel cover uh, if it will be jettisoned or temporarily stowed on board the station itself uh, the original plan called for the entire cable reel to be jettisoned following uh, the successful routing and connection uh, so the teams 
uh, with that already in mind, just talking through what the next steps are going to be. Uh, once this Ethernet cable is completed, though, uh, they'll be able to move on and recover the cable carrier with two additional bundles uh, that contain cables for connecting the TV systems between uh, the Russian service module and the MLM, and also a, a cable between uh, two antenna feeder units for the CORE's automated rendezvous system uh, between MLM and the Russian service module. So again, we're two hours and just about five minutes into today's spacewalk, waiting to get this final Ethernet cable uh, connected and then waiting on the fate of the uh, cover from the Ethernet cable reel. Uh, and then we'll get an update on just where on the timeline the crew is for the day. 17 for one, uh, with it on slide wire, and then without closing the MLI flap, you will go to Ukape. So and then uh, SMLM 1, SMLM 2 is where we're going to work now. It's going to be nearby. And once you're in place, uh, we're going to uh, route everything when we get there. I routed the cable. I'm going to uh, place it on the guy a slide wire. 14-1. You can position yourself at STU as a Shrela copy. But if you want to, you can forgo. You can forgo the Shrela and. Uh, Translate to Ukapa. Should I be translating along the Strela? Yes, you can translate along the Strela, or you can go along the circular handrails and the Pechao, whichever way you find more convenient. Okay, copy. I managed to prepare one of those three connectors that are still left. Copy, Piotr, that's good. Oleg, please uh, make sure you do not touch the MMZ with your gloves. So please the, do not touch the MLI. Right. I am going to be moving in the direction of UKP. Yes, that is right. And you and Oleg can, uh, prob will probably be going to STU together.
So right now, a little over two hours and 11 minutes into today's spacewalk. Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov continuing to move through. Uh, right now, about 20 to 30 minutes down on the timeline, as uh, right now, Pyotr Dubrov is working to finish uh, connecting that Ethernet cable, linking up the multi-purpose laboratory module on the Russian segment with the U.S. segment, giving a redundant data path for uh, upcoming payloads and also control of the European robotic arm. Uh, meanwhile, looking through the helmet camera of Oleg Novitsky here as he's making his way back up to the Poisk module. Um, pretty soon he's going to be working to retrieve the next two cable bundles uh, from a cable carrier stowed right outside. And those will be uh, the next series of cables that they'll be routing. Um, and they'll include uh, cables linking the TV systems between uh, the service module and the MLM systems. Uh, another Ethernet patch cable just to complete uh, this linking of the uh, MLM to the US OS segment on the space station and also a cable connecting uh, the core's antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module and the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, so we can see he's just about up there. Uh, he's getting a look now at Pyotr Dubrov, who's still at that patch panel on MLM. Um, so just working uh, with all the routing done to uh, get that cable connected. Artyom, do you see um, on the video on uh, the camera um, how we laid out the Ethernet cables? Yes, because it did get in the shot. Right, uh, it's 1500. Unfortunately, near the um, struts 1500, uh, the um, resolution is not as sufficient enough to see everything well. Well, it's right underneath the power cable, and there is about 10 meters between them. Copy. Thank you. And we should probably have been moved um, and brought over a holder um, for cable bundles. Well, we have a better plan for it. It's not to secure cables, unfortunately. All right, well, so be it. These are uh, on FGB on plane three, so that you can move to get, uh, not using the um, trailer, but using the Real. Copy, understood. Thank you. All right, I am on S2. Copy. And uh, um, I'm starting my movement. Stand by one, Oleg. Piotr. Just uh, wanted to ask if you wanted to secure everything there. And while uh, Oleg is moving with the cable so that you don't have to drag the cables all the way. Well, maybe we can actually secure it to STU. Let's do that. Let's secure it to STU. And then Oleg is going to grab the crew lock bag. All right, let me uh, move over to STU. The reel is right next to us, and I will use the Lear. Uh, what do you think, Artyom? Well, you are. You can use S2 together. Well, maybe Piotr doesn't need to uh, go all the way. I will hand the um, cable bundle over to him. 
and that will be it will maybe I, I should just grab the crew lock bag and I'll get there sooner I think I will keep the crew lock bag all that's next to me all the time sounds good Okay. So I am going to secure it to the translation handrail. Copy. And you need to uh, remove um, one of the layers from UKP. I see that. So the cover is secured. I have secured the cover. Uh, hold on. Is that is the is it the cover that's behind me? It's to the left of you, and it should be. As it is, so the adjustable is going to the cap. To the cover. All right, I am secure to the translation handrail and uh, 33 and 32. Copy. Artem, uh, where did you advise me to put the cover? Yeah, Could you secure it um, somewhere there? I use uh, an empty um, red. And once we have the cable free, you can go to plate uh, 9 and platform 9, and that co cover could be a little bit in the way. All right, let me secure it to the red, right next to the hatch. To um, the mobile ring, if it's more convenient, copy. And we are coming up now just two hours, 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, both Pyotr Dubrov and Oleg Novitsky have now made their way back uh, towards the initial stowage point just outside of the Poisk module, uh, from which they exited uh, when they began the spacewalk just two hours, 20 minutes ago. Um, they've completed routing that Ethernet cable down to the patch panel of the MLM, and so it'll stay there um, as they move their way back up to secure uh, and release two additional cable bundles. Um, these ones containing cables that are going to be linking up the, the TV systems uh, between the MLM and the Russian service module, uh, along with uh, another Ethernet patch cable uh, to complete all the connections to, again, give that redundant Ethernet path from the U.S. segment over to the MLM for use on any future payloads and also commanding the European robotic arm 
Uh, there's also going to be a cable that's going to link antenna feeder units between the Corps P, uh, the Corps Automated Rendezvous Systems on the Russian Zvezda Service Module and on MLM. So their first step is to just release those cable bundles from their temporary spot on the cable carrier. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, is going to uh, stay up near the Poisk module. Um, and he's actually going to move over uh, closer to the Russian service module uh, where he's going to check the connection points uh, while Pyotr Dubrov takes the cable bundle and moves it down to the multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, once he gets all the way down, they're going to they're gonna pause and make sure they have enough slack on either end to make the necessary connections uh, between the two. And they'll be securing these cables in place uh, on several handrails with wire ties along the way just to, just to keep things as neat and tidy as possible. Uh, but it is pretty difficult, as you can see. A lot of cables, a lot of components on the outside of the space station. Uh, but we are about 20 minutes or so down on the timeline. Uh, the crew did run into an issue, which you can see a metal disc right there. That's the cover from the Ethernet cable reel uh, that they were originally supposed to jettison shortly after uh, the final routing task. Uh, they're going to secure that cable uh, cover here uh, for the time being, and then at the end of the spacewalk, when they have a couple of other uh, multi-layer insulation covers that they were going to jettison, uh, the plan now is to also jettison that cover with those. To the conference handrails. Well, the uh, Strela is very close, and I need. Let me think what works best. And then from a, anyway, next to the target, you will need to move to STU anyway. So um, move behind the target and then um, get to 4005. It should be the handrail that's named after you. Yep, and it's convenient. It's not too far to go. So, adjustable, oh, no, that's retractable tether should be probably connected to the crew lock bag. Was it in any way useful on platform 17? I should say so. After I installed it, uh, it would um, get back um, and I could use it. It was very, very convenient. I could use it, and it would come back every time pretty fast. All right, let me secure myself here and pull it up. I will, if I get myself secured here, then I wouldn't be able to switch to the cable. So I will go to STU, and I think it's going to be more difficult to um, secure myself there. Rather, um, so that's why I'm thinking that I should go uh, there from uh, the attachment fixture. And I need to pull up the cable somehow, somehow. And I need to find the uh, point to which we could secure it to. We use the same uh, rings as the ones that you secured the cable cables to. Will you be able to? And you can actually use the wire ties too that um, you used on SMMLM1. 
Oleg, could you help me out to secure the adjustable red to the RME rings uh, and look for that wire tie? Uh, do you want the cable connected? Yes, the cable. So there is a cable holder and try and connect it there. Okay, I see. Will it do? Yes. And I have the cable secured here. I have one secured. And sterilize a little bit in the way here. I have the second secured, second one secured. Great. And the cable is secured. And here is the cable bay. Do you want me to let go of it? Yes, slowly. <laughs> this is probably more convenient. Okay, I got to those circumference ring handrails, and I need to get now. I need to secure myself to them. Copy. And there should be aramid tape there. Um, not to get entangled in it, but it's not really uh, too much in the way. Uh, look at the. Could you check the cable where there are any some bends, any bends or kinks there? No. It looks as if it weren't you. It looks really well, uh, really good. Copy. So I am now secured to that circumference. Handrails, and I'm starting to move. Copy. Okay. The target, passing the target. Not the best. A little over two hours, 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Oleg Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov continuing to work. Uh, they completed uh, a couple of their first major tasks of the day, uh, with Dubrov able to install uh, three new handrails along the Russian multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, the pair then worked together to uh, finish routing and mating an Ethernet cable uh, that had previously been uh, almost routed to the uh, MLM, uh, getting it kind of the last mile and then getting it uh, connected. Uh, they did run into a couple of issues uh, with the cable reel itself, 
Um, so Oleg Davitsky was able to take the cover off the reel and take the cable out and continue routing it. Uh, that cable reel was originally set to be jettisoned shortly after uh, the completion of uh, the cable routing. Uh, but for now, the cable reel itself is still installed in place in a handrail. And then the cover uh, right now is planned to be jettisoned at the end of today's spacewalk, along with uh, some other previously planned uh, multi-layer insulation covers that were set to be jettisoned by the cosmonauts. So we'll we'll see that uh, flat disk make a reappearance later on in today's spacewalk. For now, though, they're moving to uh, release and begin routing uh, two additional cable bundles uh, that have been sewed outside of the Poise module since the beginning of today's spacewalk. Uh, these will include another Ethernet patch cable that's going to link up uh, interfaces between the Russian service module and the MLM. Uh, also, two cables connecting the two modules TV systems, and then one linking up uh, the cores uh, systems on both of these modules that cores use for the auto automated rendezvous and docking of visiting Russian spacecraft, including the Progress and the uh, crewed Soyuz vehicles. So the crew is still about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, give or take down on their timeline. Again, today's spacewalk originally planned to last just shy of six hours and 30 minutes. And we are two hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk so far. So uh, they're gonna continue to work now. They're gonna be going in opposite directions at first um, with Oleg Novitsky working his way towards uh, a patch panel on the Russian service module where he's going to wait until uh, Peter Dubrov has finished routing the cable down to the MLM. Uh, they'll double check the, the amount of slack on either side, make sure that they can make all of the necessary connections uh, before they both then meet up down at the uh, patch panel, the connection panel on the MLM to begin installing the cables. Right. Well, Sergey, one of our Sergeys, uh, the one that that's good, uh, since he really isn't uh, cave diving, he would be really excited to work here. That is true. Nope, and nope. It's really inconvenient that I have to translate three times to there and back and to there again. There will be like the last translation afterwards. So just bear with us a little bit longer. Peter, can you imagine if you had failed to install that handrail? I have no idea how to uh, move the reel here, unless I jump. Or well, maybe you can um, move it over the handrails. And it's caught here somewhere. I see the crew lock bag, but I don't see the cable. And the cable is right behind you now. Is it catching the antenna? No, it's not. But it's caught um, under Berta a little bit. Um, so it's um, down there. Okay, let me try a different route.
Okay, I have translated to there. Got it. I got the crew lock bag. Everything's in place. And now, the cable is going over the target. I see it. Right, and got it. The cable is on uh, 4003 handrail. Copy. And Piotr, let us think about it. The cable. Picture. I think it's the 403 and 404. Could you check if uh, that's where you can secure the cable clamp there? I think 403 as close to the handrail would be the best. Let us tr and let me try. Uh, is it? Do you want to go even a little bit more to the right? Yes, because uh, I wanted to have it on the handrail, so as far to the right as possible. Until I tell you to stop. stop. And stop. Got it? Somewhat like this. If we connect like this, then we're going to have about at least half a meter of uh, um, slack in case we need it. Copy. Then, Oleg, let's try and move the first cable clamp. From uh, and try and move it from from platform nine. Can you do that? I don't see anything yet. I I wanted to move this cable somewhere next to the wire ties. Maybe I could use something. Well. You can use the closest uh, cuff, so to say, and then you can uh, use the remains of the um, cable bay. And I'm installing cable clamp on uh, 4003. I'm using a hook there, too, because it will make it um, completely secure then. Great. So you didn't even need to use red, right? Correct. I'm just uh, taking it off the cable and installing it to the handrail. That's good. Oleg, and um, those stripy handrails, you can still hold on to them, but be careful. This looks good here. It's not in the way for me. It just uh, helps to add extra security. Okay, copy. <laughs> okay, so I need to remove the cable from the clamp. Okay, do you want to take a break? I'm not very tired. Just within the acceptable level. Okay. It's just that you've done some serious translation and you installed the clamp. Okay. 
I am trying to distribute the energy. Doesn't always work. Uh, Peter, if it is difficult, then don't worry about it. Just see how you are feeling, and then you can continue if you want. For the cable clamp, once you drag through and route the cable, do not clamp it, because when Oleg will be installing the cables through the clamps, there should be additional slack, so you'll need to address that as well. Okay. Copy. Okay, I have the cable clamp. Now I need to pull the cable from the reel and then translate down, yes, to plate 9. And then we'll be working with the con with connector 9-11. Got it. Two hours, 43 okay. minutes into so today's spacewalk. So right now, uh, both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov working to uh, extend this uh, cable bundle. Um, right now, Oleg Novitsky is moving towards a panel on the Russian service module, panel number nine, uh, where he's going to check and make sure that he has enough slack uh, to connect the ends of his cables. And meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov making his way down to uh, the multi-purpose laboratory module, the MLM. We just watched him install a, a cable clamp on one of the handrails, 4003, securing uh, the cable bundle in place. And so then after they're able to check the slack on either side, um, they will then move to uh, start connecting this cable um, on the uh, the service module side and on the MLM side. Okay, got it. Please r remind me. First, we made... Ha, pe, pe. Wait. No. We first we made 17-1, 17-2. Those are the high frequency one. Now from the MLM kit, the sequence of installation is not that important, but we need 356, and then 31 needs to be stowed. Copy. So my adjustable tether is attached to 17-5 which is probably not ideal because because I will need to spread it out, uncoil it. Yes, use a different one. That's correct. Okay, copy that. I have the cable retrieved from the bag. Got it, Oleg. Now you need to translate to plate nine. You should have enough cable length. Okay. No, this is um, actually a question. Oh, question. Okay. I don't see plate nine. Platform nine. I was not sure which way will be best to route the cable further away from me or closer to me? I understand. I would say along the circular handrails and do not put the cable behind the handrail. So 
Be between me and the uh, circular handrails, correct? Along the the handrails, yes, correct. Okay, I think this is more convenient. I have taken off the bags, so one is attached to me using the adjustable tether. Let me see what I have here. Ready to mate. Yes, we copy that. When you're ready, you can proceed. Yes, I don't know if I should do another attachment point here or one is enough with this. Well, I think you should add add RET if possible. If it is not possible, then whatever you have is sufficient. Yes, I have a free RET. Okay, in about seven to six minutes, we are going into the night. Got it. Okay, on the cable, we have the lids attached, looking at the plate, on the plate, they are attached with the tether as well, yay. This makes things much easier. Yes, so we were expecting the high frequency ones to be attached. Looks good. Starting with connector 17.7, starting to m mate that. Did you say 17.7? Yes, 17.7, no debris. Copy. Oleg, let's wait for Peter's report. Okay. In that case, I will uh, be, um, get a better position for myself. Yes, make yourself comfortable near plate nine. Okay, I have installed the clamp. Okay, then go to 1722 in work. 172, we see the. Um, Okay, I have opened one part of the ML MLI, labeled 1910. Yes, we copy that. Are you seeing the bracket? Yeah, I think it's here. <laughs> yes, under this small one to the side, closer to you. Yes, I see that. Four connectors. Okay, Peter. Did you mate 1722? 
Yes, but I am looking at the MLI, MLI flip, uh, flap, and it's in the way. I can't, I seem to not be able to close it. Try to rotate it a little bit. Yes, I'll try to do that. Oleg, okay, which ones should I take, Pewter or me or what? The slack will come from Pewter, okay, after you connect to plate 9 and attach the coil and then have them near handrail 2233, you will retrieve the cable clamps and pull the slack through that. Okay. I think I understood. Okay, Oleg. There are four connectors, reading the numbers of the connectors. Are you seeing the decals? Not at this time. Not seeing where it can be. Okay. Uh, Anton, Artyom, can you tell me if we have, if you are receiving the video? So I see that it is signed. Which, what number do we need? Um, 9-11 is what we need. 9-11. The hook closed. We have one millimeter gap here. I think because of the tape that's attached to the lock, it's fairly thick. Okay, copy. Peter. It is too dark right now. We're going to be in total eclipse in about one minute. Peter, Oleg, don't hesitate to turn on Orlan lights when it's dark. We do have enough battery life. Okay. Right now we have good visibility. Maybe just for the camera? Yes, because from the camera we are seeing practically nothing. Okay, our connector HFP 9-11. Okay, so the markings on the cable, the decals, can you see that? And so two hours, 55 minutes into today's spacewalk right now, both uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov working to uh, connect the cables in bundle number two. Uh, this one is focused on that uh, connection between the, the core's automated rendezvous system between the MLM and the Russian service module. Um, by tying these together, this is going to enable both to be used um, during any future visiting vehicle operations over on the Russian segment with both the Russian Soyuz and the Progress. Uh, they'll be able to use the, the core's automated system on board the, the service module up until they get to a point called station keeping. That's typically when uh, the spacecraft is lined up uh, just in front of its final docking port be before it begins final approach. Uh, and then control would be handed over to the, the cores on the, the MLM, the Russian Multipurpose Laboratory module. Uh, this has done the same uh, already with other docking ports uh, like uh, the MRM-1 um, and previous
previously at the uh, the docking compartment number one piers, which was uh, detached and deorbited prior to MLM's arrival. Um, so this will be an important connection to, to use for future vehicles as MLM becomes a docking port uh, for additional Russian uh, progress and so use spacecraft down the line. And then connect the cable. If you can read what the cable says, that's great. If you cannot, then that's okay as well. Okay. I can see all four connectors. I can see the signs on them. All right, if band 999, then if band 9-10, then have band 9-11, and then 9-12. Okay. So 9-11, go ahead and disconnect that. Disconnecting, copy. Okay, this connector that you will be mating, you will be mating to connector 911 with the SM MLM 2 with that bag. Okay, copy that, we'll do that. Peter. I confirm connecting. The connector. Connector 17, MLM FP 17. It's all nice and tight. Okay, copy that now. Are you putting away the cable, uh, routing the cable, or what? Well, I am preparing the cable clamp right now. Yes. By the way, it didn't really work out that well here. It was um, installed very smooth, but then I think it coiled around the target. I can see that right now. We copy. That's okay. You'll have other opportunities. Okay. So right now, I cannot disconnect the high pair 9-11 because the string got caught in the spring-loaded ring. Can I take this off, or is it okay? is is it not okay, or is it okay? Okay, wait. If you're talking about the spring-loaded clamp, then yes. Or yes, that's what I'm talking about, the clamp only for now. Okay, yes, you can do that. Copy. That should be sufficient. Thank you. I will uh, remove the cap and put this here. Okay, copy. Nine twelve has been installed. The clamp is installed. The connector never got disconnected. Okay, we copy. I demated the connector F HFP nine dash eleven, trying to find the markings on the cable. If it did exist at some point, I cannot see it. The cables are very thin. I cannot see the decals, the labeling. Mission Control Moscow, this is ISS. Yes, go ahead. Artyom, I um, disconnected the connectors. I don't see any labels on it, you mean on the cable. Correct. And don't see any 
markings on the cable. Okay, we copy that. This is an old connector. It needs to be connected to connector 9-11 uh, for the SM bag. Okay, you mean the one I have right now? Yes, the bag that you have currently. There are two connectors, 1, 2-2, two -two, and then 9-11. Got it. Okay. If pen 2-2, 2-2 should be still on the cable coil. Yes, it is on the coil. And then the other one, the adjustable one. And right now we're a little over three hours and two minutes into today's spacewalk. Novitsky and Dubrov still continuing to work with uh, the SMMLM2 cable bundle. It's the service module in the multi-purpose laboratory module number two bundle. Uh, they're working on getting this uh, cable connected that's going to tie together the, the core's automated rendezvous and docking systems on both modules uh, for the handoff that will occur during future visiting vehicle arrivals and departures um, to docking on the MLM or the uh, upcoming Russian node module that will be installed at the end of the MLM. A number? There is a number, 103.18. 1452, then there is 15 KS 31 8531A40, correct. Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Go ahead and make that. Okay, copy that, putting that in work. Connecting it to the one that I took off the plate. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I have it. Um, you made it mostly, but there is a spring that's still holding it in place. Okay, we copy that. Oleg, we would recommend that you either take a break to rest now or tie this connector in place and tie the coil to the plate and cover all the connectors and tie the coil so handrail 2333. Now, what do you prefer? Do you want to take a break now or later? Honestly, I can't. I can't tell. Both options are fine, but I guess let me let let me finish here. Okay, copy that. So let's connect this to the valve to the in the. A cover with the ML, MLI flap. Okay, got it. It's just I'm not finding what to connect it to, with. Hello. 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 I hang up, Shay. Artyom, I am, I have clamp 
2108. Maybe I could use that to somehow place it here under the MLI. Well, I we will need the clamp for the cable to attach behind the target. Oh, you mean the wire tie? Yes, I'm sorry, I meant the wire tie. Okay. So that's just the plate, and that's all there is to it. Okay. Is there any room to reach any curve there? Wait. I'm sorry, what? Is there a Lyrica clamp somewhere? Or maybe just put it under the MLA, MLI flap and it will hold it in place by itself? Okay. Let me try. I have some available Lyrica clamps. Okay, so it is nearby, close to the EVA tools. We got wire ties, so maybe we can wrap it up here. Okay, it's uh, whatever you say. Okay, I can try to install it, cover it with MLI. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to think about what else I can do. Okay, understood. I think you won't be able to secure it there in a reliable way. At least what I've done is cover the Velcro flap. Okay. Oleg. I think it's staying in place for now. We copy at the end of the EVA. Okay. So on this reel, on this coil, I will need to start moving towards the other and then attach the cable, right? No, the coil that you have with connector 2-2, you need to attach it to handrail 2333. Okay. And this is Mission Control Houston. Right now we are three hours, nine minutes, 23 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Uh, our Russian cosmonauts doing the spacewalk today, uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov continuing to work to uh, mate and then secure this cable, uh, tying together the core's automated rendezvous systems between the Russian service module and the Russian multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, as they continue that work, we did want to give you one quick update uh, on uh, the status that we had talked about at the beginning of today's broadcast. Uh, the, the crew on board the station was awoken last night by a smoke detector alarm that happened right before 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, the alarm lasted for about a minute and then cleared uh, with the crew waking up and then immediately taking uh, some atmospheric uh, readings inside the cabin, uh, inside the Russian service module. Uh, they had no indication of a source, but did report a burnt plastic or electronics type smell uh, in the Zvezda service module with a uh, faint smell also uh, reported uh, all the way over in the uh, U.S. Node 1 module, which is directly connected to the Russian segment. Uh, again, no source was found or identified. The crew uh, investigated and observed for just over an hour um, and also activated an air filter, uh, which helped the smell to subside, uh, but not completely disappear. Uh, the crew did report uh, that it was still there when they awoke this morning. Uh, but the crew went back to sleep after uh, observing and activating that air filter. Um, and the, 
the uh, the smell was not any impact to uh, getting ready for uh, today's spacewalk, which we are again a little over three hours into. Um, so no changes to the plan uh, for the rest of the crew either. No, yet no, not yet, our Tom. This is a handrail on along a uh, plane three to a uh, handrail is running parallel to each other. If you're going to look in the direction of the assembly compartment, it's going to be on the right side. Yes, I'm not. I haven't accessed the circular handrail, so it's uh, difficult to find. I can't tell you uh, if I have found it yet or not. So I'm going to. I am going to try one approach. I'm going to secure myself to these rings. It's like it, it probably sounds like I'm cutting the branch I'm sitting on, but it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. There are tons of branches here. Okay. Okay, Peter, uh, go ahead. Uh, just be very careful. Yes, I have to be uh, very slow and deliberate here. So you're holding on with the left, Alex, you're holding on with your left hand to the handrail in question. Am I? I am trying to move away from it. Well, this is not what you should be doing. This is the handrail 2333, long plane 3. All you see happiness is uh, always somewhere close. If you have the po an opportunity, okay, the cable, either uh, pull the cable into the cable clamp or if the bundle is uh, tied up in a way that you cannot route the cable into the cable clamp, then uh, tie it up to the handrail nearby. Well, I'm thinking that I'll be able to route it in there. This circular handrail has orange cables routed nearby. Maybe I can route it over there. Or do you think I shouldn't try it? Well, maybe they're not in those handcuff shape. Uh, cable holders because they're too uh, small of a diameter. Maybe you shouldn't be uh, uh, touching it. Okay, copy. And copy all. Do not. I do not touch those. Okay, copy. Do not touch. I just have to cut this one and then the minimum uh, required 
this the vitamins is complete, and then we need we can pull it out and make the connectors. But then we'll have to uh, route them somehow. And this is Mission Control Houston. Another quick handover period, so we'll get that live video communication back with the space station momentarily. Again, these are going to happen periodically throughout the uh, spacewalk today, uh, but as it is a spacewalk, we're in what's called Teacher's Critical Mode. Um, so we have essentially a, a top priority on the tracking and data relay satellites that we use to communicate with the International Space Station. Um, just so we have as much constant video and audio communication with the crew members while they're outside. Uh, so we'll get that back momentarily. Uh, we are three hours, 16 minutes, and 54 seconds into today's spacewalk. Originally planned to last uh, just under six and a half hours. Uh, the crew still about 20 minutes down on their timeline as they continue uh, to finish routing and uh, securing this cable in place uh, that's tying together uh, the Coors Automated Rendezvous Systems, uh, the antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module uh, and the newly arrived Russian multipurpose laboratory module, the MLM. And in this view, through the helmet camera of EV2 Pyotr Dubrov, we can see him moving an equipment bag out of the way. And he's, again, just working to secure uh, down at the patch panel on the MLM uh, this cable. Meanwhile, uh, home on the other side of the space station up top, his fellow Russian cosmonaut in the EV1 for today, uh, Oleg Novitsky, is finishing. Uh, securing his cable bundle in place. They're using a couple of hand clamps. You're hearing numbers called out. Those are the different handrails that they're securing them to. Uh, things like 2233. Not very clear. Uh, metal rings are tied with cords to these caps. Okay, yes, that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, I tighten it. Thank you. Copy. Бухта там не сильно болтается. Может быть, ее тоже подвязать с проволокой. Alex, can you use the wire? Uh, can you tie up this end with the wire as well? Which end? Uh, the bundle two two. I can easily tie it up with the same wire. Yes, the same wire. Could you make a half turn around the handrail? So it doesn't flap around. Yes, around the circular handrail, if you can even attach it to the cable clamp. You route it through it, so tie it up to the same one. Okay. Okay, we'll tie it up momentarily. So all connectors on panel 17 are ready for mating. Peter, could you repeat your last? You said connectors on panel 17, uh, they're ready or prepared for a cable mating. Copy. Thank you. Then uh, catch your breath, take a little break. 
I'm going to put Cap Keeper into Krugel bag. So this particular beard, uh, beard-like uh, structure is out of the way. Now we're going to have the sunrise in about three minutes. You had a lot of fine motor movements you had to do right now. So uh, how about you take a break for the time being until the sun rises? Okay. But okay, I will do it. Well, you see, if we're, if I'm saying you need to take, you can take a break. Then it's taking a break and not tucking things into the crew look bag. Well, you see, I wanted to take a break with. Uh, uh, the knowledge that everything is safely out of the way, because tucking it into the crew log bag and putting it away is not that difficult a task. How many wire ties do you have on your attached equipment, on your workstations? Three on the swing arm. And one more I removed from the cable that I was routing. There are... That makes it four, and two on crew hook bag, and uh, four more inside the crew hook bag. So, so we will, you will have enough for panel number nine. No problem. So right now, uh, in about a minute, uh, Peter, we're going to have the sun rays. And Oleg, when you're ready, uh, please translate along the circular handrails and uh, secure the cable into the cable clamps. Copy. So the last workstation where I routed the cable into the cable clamp and where I tied up the cable bundle has a fed to two. It's about uh, one meter and a half. The cable is routed nicely and there is a wired uh, a wire tie. I can route the cable there as well. Okay, copy. Thank you. Let's wait for the sunrise. And you're going to. Uh, you're going to take a video of how the cable is routed. Okay, I'm just going to wait for the sunrise. It's about to start, so let's wait for the sunrise. Now, an audible interference. The LED on the um, camera is not on, um, so the helmet camera is not on. Peter, uh, the calm is really bad. Could you repeat your last? My helmet camera LED is not on. So LED is not linking well, but we are receiving the video. The high definition is working. The low definition is not. We are re we are receiving the video anyway, and it's sufficient. And thank you for the information. Okay, copy. Is the are the lighting conditions uh, good enough? Uh, I didn't copy your last uh, to do what? 
To take photographs of the, how you tied up the cable. Oh, I see. I got it. I don't know whether I should be taking photographs with GoPro. I will try now uh, take a photograph of the connection on panel 9 and this particular bundle. Okay, let's do it at the very end. And then you can, uh, I didn't copy your last. So I am supposed to go to Peter and then I'm going to need to tie up the uh, cable. Uh, you're going to um, route the cable clamp and uh, there will be wires behind the target. Okay, copy. Next, during the next orbit, we might have even more interference. And this is Mission Control Houston, so we do have confirmation that they have finished uh, mating that cable bundle number two uh, to both the Russian service module and the multi-purpose laboratory module, so we got that tying together. Uh, the two cores uh, feeder antennas in both uh, the the service module and the MLM, and that'll come into play for uh, future visiting vehicle operations involving uh, the MLM, the multi-purpose laboratory module. And with that, complete the two spacewalkers, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, as of right now, are still about 30 minutes behind on their timeline, uh, but they're continuing now. Uh, next, they're getting the uh, all of the slack restrained from uh, the cable that they just finished mating and then moving on to the SMMLM-1 bundle. It's the service module, multi-purpose laboratory module number one cable bundle. Uh, and they're going to be connecting this uh, to tie together the uh, TV systems between the two modules, the service module uh, and MLM and also installing uh, one final Ethernet patch cable. Uh, at what point they'll be able to do a connectivity test. And again, that's just part of the uh, the overall connections being made today, uh, tying together the US segment and the newly arrived MLM, uh, providing a redundant data path for any future payloads, and also control of the European robotic arm on the outside of MLM. Are you able to copy? Inaudible? Yes, I can barely hear you. Peter? What did you say? I'm not able to copy what he's saying. Oh, 
Were you were you were you the one speaking? Yes. Well, right now, go ahead and and speak now. Oh, Peter. I think the interferences are over. I think right now we are able to somewhat understand you. During the next orbit, possibly we're going to have even more interference, a higher level of interference. For some reason, it's not surprising. I don't know. Well, that's the um, motive. That's motivation for you to speed up your activities. Okay, you can go ahead, Peter, and make the connectors uh, in the bundle SMMLM1. Okay, copy. You can start with connector 17.3. I would I would recommend us starting with 17.6 because it's the farthest out and most difficult. 17.3 is the Ethernet connector we're going to test. Okay, got it. We're going to start with 17.3. If your activity is tied to that particular connector, then no questions asked. We have the 17.3 uh, cable connector. Looks, pins are good, no FOD. Copy. Alright, Tom, I got to. I got to the target. Okay, copy. On the circular handrail, uh, there are two cable holders uh, shaped as handcuffs. Copy. I hear he would probably need to. You will need to. I will need to use the wire to tie it down. Yes, I think uh, you will behind the past the target. You will need to uh, tie it with uh, wires because there are no cable clamps there anymore. Yes, there there are none here. So I made it, and the uh, light is closed. Is it 17.3? 17.3 is mated. I confirm. Copy. Thank you. Peter, and the um, order in which you're going to May 17.5 or 17.6 is up to you. Well, if we started from this side, then that's how we're going to move copy. Three hours, 35 minutes, 10 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk, the 50th Russian EVA or spacewalk in support of the International Space Station. Right now, uh, both of our spacewalkers, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov have met up and they're down at a connection panel on the MLM, the multi-purpose laboratory module. There's three cables that they're working to install now, two linking uh, TV systems between the MLM and the Russian service module, and one an Ethernet patch cable to finish that Ethernet routing connecting uh, MLM to the US OS, the US segment. Okay, 
Um, you're going to hear them refer to these cables um, by their connector numbers, uh, 17.3, 17.5, and 17.6. Um, and one of the cables, uh, the 17.3, will be secured in place using a clip uh, known as an ERCA. Uh, once they're finished connecting the cables here at the MLM, uh, the pair will make their way back up uh, to the top side of the space station and then over to the Russian service module where they're going to connect the other ends of these cables uh, to get everything in place. So again, uh, right now working to uh, install cables tying together TV systems on the Russian service module and the MLM and also that Ethernet patch cable. Uh, they just wrapped up a few minutes ago uh, connecting uh, a cable that's tying together the, the core's automated rendezvous systems uh, that'll be used in future visiting vehicle operations with MLM. And then earlier today, uh, finished uh, some of the, the major routing of an Ethernet cable, uh, which this patch cable will complete, uh, but tying, again, the U.S. segment over to MLM. Uh, Piotr Dubrov also, uh, right off the bat in the spacewalk, was able to install three gap spanners, just long handrails, on the outside of the multi-purpose laboratory module, uh, with one additional one potentially being installed a little bit later uh, in the spacewalk. Once they finish routing these three cables, uh, they have a couple of more tasks that they can uh, try and tackle during this spacewalk. One will be installing a platform with adapters uh, on a passive base point uh, that can just be used for uh, future payloads uh, to fly outside the Russian segment. Uh, also looking at installing uh, a platform with three BioRisk containers outside of the POISC module. A uh, BioRisk is a long-running uh, study uh, conducted by Roscosmos uh, looking at uh, just assessing the risk of biological damage to space equipment and hardware. Uh, they're exposing um, different uh, different samples, different pieces of technology, different materials uh, to both the vacuum of space and just microgravity uh, conditions inside of the space station. I'm just looking at the viability of different microscopic uh, organisms when they're exposed to the space environment. Uh, part of this looking at what any potential risk could be of transferring contamination or organisms from Earth uh, to exterior surfaces on a spacecraft um, or eventually onto any interplanetary uh, surfaces. So. That's still on the uh, agenda for today's spacewalk if they're able to get through it. Again, we're about three hours, 38 minutes into today's spacewalk, planned to last uh, just shy of six and a half hours. So after you arrange all the connectors, you will have to take pictures of the plate and then how you have uh, arranged the whole route, of, like the routing of the cables. Uh, Artyom, I am done with the cable 17, 2, 3, 2 and 3. Copy Oleg, uh, move over to Piotr, and um, you can start working with 17, with um, cable, with cable clamp 40.3, or you can take um, SMMLM1 cable bundle from Piotr and start working with that. Okay. Maybe that would be a better option. But first of all, you will needed to use the wire tie, just very similar to the Ethernet cable, because uh, while you are going to be um, putting those cables down, you will be tearing them out of the Lirka, Lirkas. So first, I need to make sure I am really, really secure somewhere around Piotr, and that's when I can start working. Yes, I think that's uh, the most uh, reasonable way. And also leave some slack for Piotr so he can work with those connectors. Uh, Piotr, how much slack do you need? Well, how much can you give me? I'd say I am done with two out of three connectors, 
and they're not too far from the Irkutsk. So you can actually... Uh, pull the cable. So I need to follow the Ethernet um, cable's um, route. That's right. So I will take that uh, cable, uh, that wire tie. And meanwhile, I will try to get a little bit closer to, to you. Okay. Piotr, what if you use, um, you, what if you secure everything and well i i am trying to use 4225 and i'm trying to take a wire tie and use it for for that exact uh, idea right and uh, i will try and get a little bit close and help you out there right this is a pretty challenging spot to clean up everything here. So seventeen three one. That's where we can stow Lirka. Okay, so I think Phew. 
Петр, отдышись. Петр, take a break. How goes it? Not too bad. But the cable, okay, cable clamp, the wire tie, unintelligible. And the reel is not spinning right. It's a little bit too short. Would you like me to attach it to the adjustable so that you could have a little bit more slack and you could work a little bit better with it? Uh, well, it is already uh, on a, an adjustable adjustable tether, but, and you can um, use the cable bundle from here, and it's better to use my side. Let me use the wire tie. Okay. Let me see how it goes. To there, to here. And this connector. And this is Mission Control Houston. Three hours, 48 minutes, 22 seconds into today's spacewalk. Uh, the cable routing tasks are continuing for Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov. Uh, they just finished connecting uh, three different cables um, to a, a patch panel, a connection point on the Russian multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, right now they're working to route those cables now up to the Russian service module. Where they're going to secure them uh, in place on some handrails and then begin to install them uh, and connect them to a patch panel up on the SM, the service module. Um, so they're going to just continue along. We can see them installing uh, cable clamps along the way to help hold these cables in place, making sure they have enough slack uh, for the trip up before they make these final connections. And again, these are uh, just connecting together uh, the TV systems. Two of these are for uh, connecting TV systems between the service module and the multipurpose laboratory module. And the other one, an Ethernet patch cable, just to complete all of this routing. Um, connecting uh, Ethernet and data uh, between the U.S. segment on the station and the newly arrived multipurpose laboratory module. And this Ethernet uh, will provide a redundant data stream uh, for any payloads uh, hosted on the MLM in the future, and also giving a redundant path for commanding and controlling the European robotic arm outside of MLM. So everything continuing, uh, they're, uh, they've caught up. Uh, a little bit more on their timeline, uh, getting these cables connected pretty quickly. Uh, we were expecting them to be a little bit past the four hour mark before uh, they're able to finish uh, all the connections up on the service module. Uh, we are just three hours and 50 minutes into today's spacewalk. Again, everything today planned to last about six and a half hours. Um, once they finish this cable routing, they'll move to uh, installing uh, a, uh, a a payload platform uh, with adapters uh, outside of the voice module, uh, removing a protective cover, uh, and then also installing uh, canisters from uh, the long-running bio-risk uh, experiment on board the station. 
Uh, once they're done with that, uh, assuming they get through everything, uh, the installation will have some protective covers, some multi-layer insulation covers that are removed. Uh, those are planned to be jettisoned, and along with those, uh, they'll be jettisoning uh, the cover from the uh, Ethernet cable reel, uh, which if you've been following along, uh, caused a little bit of issues uh, early on in the spacewalk where they were unable to get the reel uh, from its temporary stowage point on a handrail uh, to get around that. They were able to take the cover off the cable reel and bring it with them, and it's been temporarily stowed outside the POIST module uh, ever since they finished routing that cable. And it is destined to be jettisoned along with that multi-layer insulation at the end of today's spacewalk. Um, so before they move their way inside the hatch, we should see uh, one of these spacewalkers jettison. So just slowly release um, those covers uh, off the, essentially off the side of the space station. Uh, all of these calculated in advance and coordinated with our trajectory officer here in Mission Control Houston, just to make sure we understand um, the flight profile essentially of this, uh, of these items that get jettisoned, ensuring they're not going to uh, pose any risk to the space station afterwards. Um, and then they'll be on a trajectory to burn up shortly uh, following their jettison. So. We should see that towards the end of today's spacewalk right now, three hours, 52 minutes into a planned six and a half hour EVA. Oleg Novitsky, Pyotr Dubrov continuing to move these cables up towards the Russian service module. And once they get there, we'll see them start to make these additional connections. And then that should finish all of our cable routing for today. For that, we'll have to cut off a few more ropes or tear them off and leave them in the Lyrkas and leave enough slack. All right, so, uh, that sounds like a plan. Uh, tear them off and leave them in the Lyrkas. Uh, using wire cutters is uh, a little bit dangerous there just because you already have the cables laid all laid out. And before that, I highly recommend you take a break. Sounds good. Sure hope so. And we have not done the Ethernet test yet. So there is a chance that you will have to disconnect all the connectors and redo it one more time. 18-4 or 17-3, 17-3, all right, 17-3. Artyom, are you receiving any video from the cameras? Yes. What do you think about this connection right next to the internet cable? Yes, this looks good. There are no limitations. And continue uh, next to plate 8. Right, and uh, really in the bay, talking over each other. Yes, that's where you need to, to connect it. Let me use the wire tie, uh, the one that is for 026. And uh, then it's going to be loosely co uh, connected to 4 25. Yes, that, this all sounds like a good plan, but. Uh, you need to take a break, um, Piotr. I do have enough juice left for that one ca for this one cable. Okay, Piotr. Okay, I am done. This is uh, the cable secure. It's secure. Copy. And there is uh, very little slack left. And it looks pretty good now. I'm hitting something with the back of my head all the time. It's probably the SM module right behind me.
Олег. Олег. Ответил. Go ahead. Когда дойдешь до восьмой платы, when you are on platform eight, let's start with connectors eight five and eight six. Eight fourteen should not be made it without um, our go. I copy. I would not do anything without your go. That's good to know. And thank you. Петр, as far as I understand, you took pictures of all the uh, connectors on uh, platform 18, and you are ready to close them with the MLI. Yes. Um, and I took pictures of how I laid the cables, so it's very clear. This part is very clear in the pictures while I was taking a break. Copy, thank you. So once uh, I am done with um, the Lirka, I will take uh, pictures of the final configuration. Okay, sounds good. Uh, there will be a short uh, LOS and we are not receiving any video either. Yes. Copy. Copy. And this is Mission Control Houston, just a few seconds away from four hours elapsed time into today's spacewalk. We get in that video connection back with the station momentarily. We are on a short handover, so just that period of time while we're waiting for our uh, antennas on the station to reacquire signal with the tracking and data relay satellites. Uh, the crew right now, though, just finishing up uh, the final installation of cables that should take place. Uh, during the spacewalk today, they were over, uh, having moved up from the multi-purpose laboratory module to the Russian service module, uh, where they're connecting uh, three cables, um, one an Ethernet patch cable, just completing that data connection between the U.S. segment and the Russian multi-purpose laboratory module, the MLM, uh, and then two uh, high-frequency cables connecting TV systems between MLM and the Russian service module. You could hear them talking about taking photos. They take photos of all of the MEDA connectors prior to closing up the insulation flaps that protect them, uh, just for additional review by teams down on the ground. Uh, also able to do some connectivity tests, hopefully coming up soon, uh, just to check out all of those connections. Um, once the cable routing is done, uh, they'll move back to the poise catch and uh, take some additional hardware out that's going to be installed outside the station. Uh, one's a platform that has adapters on it for additional payloads. Uh, another one, uh, three canisters for the long-running bio-risk experiment project on board the station. Great. LOS is over. Bobby. We are receiving the um, video image as well. Copy. Do you see clearly how we arranged all the connectors? Well, partly visible. 
because I, I'm saying that 1714, if you want us to move it a little bit lower, then we have to cut the reefers and pull out the cables. Right. If we choose this route, otherwise, I don't think they're going to fit under the MLI cover. That's an option. So one tie got loose from the Lirka, and the cable is free now. No, but still too short. You mean the length of the cable is not enough for a bend like this? Right. I will have to start bending the cable right where it's uh, coming out of the connector. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Or cut off the lyricas and pull it through here. Oh, maybe uh, I wouldn't have to use such uh, dras drastic sharp measures. Unintelligible. It's really hard to pull them out, and they're not coming out that easy. Piotr, you are ahead of the timeline, actually. In 30 seconds, we decided not to do the adapter plates for MLM. We don't have anything to um, do, and uh, please do not rush. We still have to um, work with MRM2, and um, just take your time. The Ethernet cable uh, test for cable one has been successful, and um, the connectors have been connected well. We are going to connect all the connectors um, afterwards, and we'll be standing by for further steps. All right, I got to FEP 8. As far as I understand, it's not very big. It's big uh, with four valves on it. And um, that is correct. And you need valve uh, two and four. All right, and the second one, so Artyom, there is a half a pay eight and a half a pay eight nine, so eight nine. Okay, we were actually mistaken, and we need a half a pay a one. Half a per eight, two, three, eight, four, five and six should be there. Uh, 
Right. They were under the second one. So I got half a pair five and half a pair six. These connectors um, are unoccupied. Copy. You can connect to uh, the following. Uh, you can. I can connect the connectors to them, to the cables to them, right? Yes, correct. And these are high frequency connectors. And we are just over four hours, eight minutes into today's spacewalk. Again, originally timeline to last about six and a half hours. Uh, both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov at the work site on the Russian service module to get these additional cables connected. And there's three cables that we're looking at getting connected to related uh, to tie together the TV systems between the Russian service module and the MLM and then one final Ethernet patch cable getting put in place after which we'll do another connectivity test. So we have managed to reduce um, the bend angle of the... And so once the cable. spacewalkers are able to uh, get these connected, they'll take, uh, again, some additional closeout photos of all the connections of the cables that can be uh, sent down to the ground for additional review, and then they'll be replacing the MLI, the multi-layer insulation, uh, those uh, white flaps that you can see them manipulating uh, that just provide some protection um, to all of the underlying electrical components from the space flight environment. I think that's how it goes. And then once all that's complete, they'll take a look at their, their current status and then make their way back over to the POISC module, their airlock for today's operations. Uh, the next task uh, on the list for them would involve taking out some, some larger hardware, uh, one a platform that can host future payloads and another one a payload itself, uh, both destined uh, for areas just outside of the uh, POISC module. And then assuming they're able to get those in place, there are some protective covers um, over the attachment points that'll get removed that were slated to be jettisoned. Uh, they'll be, assuming they get those off, those covers, along with the uh, cover from the cable reel for the ethernet cable that's already been routed and connected uh, that was originally slated for jettison. That cover uh, will join those other protect protective MLI covers and a jettison at the very end of today's spacewalk. Uh, before they wrap up, do a final tool inventory, and make their way back inside of Poisk. But 814 goes under number four. Yes, it should be on the right side. Okay, copy. Yes, order. Uh, that's the same, unfortunately, the same case. I uh, tucked all the connectors into the uh, niche. Okay, Peter, uh, get a break. Take a break. Okay, I'm going to take imagery. And then I will try to close it. Okay, Peter, try to take the um, uh, video of everything and then only then uh, should you close it. Okay.
Олег. Олег. И Петр. Да, приду. Олег и Питер, go ahead. Как я говорил, As I mentioned, we are uh, running ahead of time, but to a certain extent, and also, Oleg, there's nothing you can do on panel number eight, and uh, everything needs to be completed on panel 17 first, so my recommendation would be as, follow, as follows, Oleg, you're going to translate to MRM2. To, uh, to the handrail 4100 and take it and bring it to the installation, uh, to its installation site. When Peter is complete with his activity on the panel, he's going to go to panel 8 and start meeting the connectors. What do you think about this plan? Well, the plan is a plan. There is nowhere to go without a plan. Well, but basically you have no objections? <laughs> of course none. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have a lot of energy today. That, that sounds good. So I'm going to close the MOI. Yes, exactly. Uh, please go to Strela, STU, and then proceed accordingly. I tried to take uh, some photographs from close up and from uh, farther away, get the general view. Okay, copy, thank you. So, without having anything to brace ourselves against, uh, we're going to try to close this up. Give me a, a reference point where I can uh, brace myself against. You don't have any a retractable uh, tether? There is nowhere to attach a retractable uh Tether too. It wouldn't be of any use. There is MOI here, and that's all. 18 4. If you move that MOI flap to the cable, do you think that you'll get more space that way? You see, the cable splits here, so it's not going to move. Copy. There is one uh, cable going here further than the other. Uh, goes into the uh, slide wire, number 17-4. Okay, copy. However, well, this needs to stay in the uh, slide wire, so it won't work.
We are just coming up on four hours, 18 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, our crew members currently split a little bit apart. Uh, right now, Pyotr Dubrov, EV2 for the spacewalk, we're looking through his helmet camera. Uh, he's wor working to close the MLI, the multi-layer insulation. That's that flap you can see him uh, attaching over the cables that have just been connected on the service module. Um, that just provides them some insulation, some protection from that spaceflight environment. As soon as he's done, uh, he'll make his way over uh, to where Oleg Novitsky's waiting at patch panel number eight. Uh, he's working on patch panel 17 now, but over on the service modules patch panel number eight, they'll have three different, three additional connections to make, and that will complete all of our cable routing tasks for today's spacewalk. I have approached to the um, gap center. I'll go to MRM2 to the um, uh, gap center handrail. 4100, copy. 4100, gap center handrail. I think everything is holding pretty well. The part that uh, the one further out is confusing to me. The cables are sticking out. That's okay. It's not that big a deal. So I think you did a good job with uh, panel 17. The cable is somewhat rigid. Then I'm going to translate to uh, panel number eight, uh, but I wanted to uh, emphasize again, and I will keep emphasizing it throughout the day today, please take a break. Get some rest. Okay, well, I'm taking a rest, and I'm uh, attaching the retractable tether. In about five minutes, uh, there will be a clip. Okay, copy. So, 
I have a secured the handrail for one zero zero to adjustable feather. Copy, Oleg. Maybe. Maybe the second point, a uh, second uh, touch point, you can make red, and the transportation tether you can leave inside, and you don't have to take it outside. Okay, copy sounds good. Thank you. Are we going to uh, use the adjustable tether today at all? Any longer? Uh, stand by one. Let me think about it. Because I have uh, just one slide wire on that tether. I'm just wondering whether I should remove it or take it off. Peter, I'm thinking that if you're adjustable, uh, tether is not used, then I, I don't think it will be a big deal. The main reason we needed them was to route the cables, and everything else can be handled uh, by red. Okay, copy, then I'll leave it hanging here. Atom, where should I be moving to? Move along Strela the same way to panel 15 and 16, 1516. Copy. I think I straighten I straighten things out here a little. The sunset is coming. A copy, yes, we're ready. Uh, Peter, did you start translating to panel number eight? Yes, I started moving little by little. Not in any particular hurry. I sorted out my tethers because they were tangled up. Picture look bag, adjustable tether, my tethers. Copy. I spent some time straightening it all out, but I am um, now confident it's all in order.
This is Mission Control Houston. We are just shy of four hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov now meeting up at the patch panel number eight on the Russian service module. Uh, they've just got these three last cables to connect uh, and then reinstall the uh, multi-layer installation after they take some closeout photos and then we'll be done uh, with all of these uh, cable routing tasks for today. Well, with the handrail, it's uh, comfortable translating anywhere. Okay, I, Artem, I am here. I arrived at Peter's location. How should we uh, position ourselves? Uh, Peter, could you let Oleg go first? Oleg go, is going to Hendrio 4100. So I'm going to panel 8 and further on. Could you repeat your last? I'm going to panel 8, and then I'm going to go along circular handrails. Yes. Uh, to the circular handrail, and then you're going to go to MLM, to the handrail 4001. 4, Copy. And who are you going to be fishing for with the hook this size? Well, there are some wild beasts here. Is this all good? Is it in the way? Uh, everything is fine. The wretched range escaped here. But, but you see, we were able to stop you uh, in your tracks, Peter, so you're forced to take a break. So, going, so I should be going further out there behind that triangle antenna. Could you repeat your last? You should be moving away uh, from this panel. So, you will need to translate to your left. So I should be going behind, I'm going to go past that triangle wire antenna. Yeah, so whatever is here, I see the uh, handrail 4080 or 080, yes, correct, and then the 4018, uh, and then the next one is 4017. Okay, copy. I can also 
start slowly translating. Okay, uh, Peter, you can start translating to panel eight. Atom. Go ahead. Can I use um, my tether, uh, my tether to secure myself to uh, Andrea 4011 because I won't be able to reach as far as 4018. Well, you see, there's an antenna, and I won't be able to pass it by to get around it. Would Pachao Hendrios be of any help for you? They're routed um, too high up. Okay, I understand where you are. I got it. So, do you think you will be able to reach uh, further to the left to Hendra 4018 or 4017? No. I, that's the reason I'm asking. I will try to reach over the antenna to the Hendra 4012. You see, if you move your feet over first and then the tethers. So the tether on the right is the short one, so I will tether myself to 4018 handrail, you know, and but in that case I won't be able to reach it after that. Well, uh, I will reach it, uh, but if there is an antenna on the way, I might break it. You know, this antenna actually, life life is up because uh, we uh, needed it for the docking. The most important thing: do, do not uh, do any damage to the spacesuit. Okay, I approached the connector plate number eight and see the cable, copy Peter. I will try to figure out the uh, situation with the connectors. The connectors eight, five, and eight, six are tied with the lanyards, so you will uh, be getting out the cutter right away. So we had a short LOS. Guys, how do you copy Moscow? So I'm at the handrail 1416, 1418, and I can see yellow 
markings. Now I see where I should. You can see where you should tether, right? Yes, there is a kind of a uh, unit in the form of a mushroom. Yes, that's correct. So it's a go to start installation. Copy in work. So the uh, connector uh, got uh, connected to the mushroom, so to say. Now, please use the uh, boat. Yes, I will rotate it now. Copy. This is Peter. I'm here with the cutter next to the connectors. Peter, you are ready to start working with the connectors. Is this correct? Yes, I can. I have cut uh, four uh, aramid uh, lanyards. Okay, now connectors 8586. Yes, 85 and 86. I confirm. 14. You know, you will need uh, the uh, 8 by 14 there. So first uh, stow the cutter and uh, made the connectors, and then you will go to 814. It, it is to the right a little bit. Yes, that's correct, uh, behind the flap. I confirm. This is Alek. I installed 4100, and now can use the platform. Alek, remove your tethers, adjustable and red, from the handrail, and I have a question. Can you see the ECOVA sensors uh, that are a little bit further from you? Yes, I can see three of them. And the, behind them, the, there is a SPP-28 right away. Yes, you know, uh, the appetite uh, becomes better when, once you start eating. So let us take pictures. So what distance do you want me uh, to take pictures from? You know, you please approach uh, it's closer uh, from the handrail 4100. Yes, Alec, uh, the closer the better. Could you please move a little bit closer? Well, one meter, meter and a uh, oh, half meter. You know, Alec, you have to approach it really up close. Of course, uh, we need to take pictures from the side that where you are now, and also from the other, from the back side of the adapter later on. Okay, now I understand. This is Piotr. I think uh, you know I won't need caps. I, I think that the caps are not tied here as well. Yes, that's correct, Peter. They were sent. Uh, long ago, so the caps are not tied, are not secured. Okay. So I think inaudible. Well, Piotr, I take a breather, take a break.
unintelligible. So what about the adjustable tether? Yes, 8.14 uh, actually is tied. Well, I will start from this one right away. I will cut uh, the lanyards. We'll tow uh, the cutter, and then we'll get the cap keeper, and we'll start collecting caps. Yes, of course, if you, you know, you can use a cap keeper, no problem at all. So I don't want to move away from the connector here. You have uh, 10 minutes uh, before the sunrise, so Alec, when you start taking pictures of the sensors, could you please switch on Orlan lights as well, in addition to other lights? So we won't wait for uh, for the sunrise? No, Alec, uh, we, uh, we won't. We do not waste time, you know, although uh, you are on the dot, but still, you know, it's 10 minutes before the sunrise. You know, one sensor is just in front of me, and the second one will be at an angle. Is it okay? Uh, no, it's okay, Alec. So try to take pictures uh, as close as possible, and then you will relocate, and from the uh, uh, pressurized adapter location, you will also take pictures. Uh, it is desirable to take close-up pictures from there as well and uh, to take the picture of the second one. This is important. All right, so I will start uh, switching on Orlan lights. Piotr, we are watching how you work with the cutter here. So, Alec, what about Orlan uh, lights? Are they on on your space yet? Piotr, thank you. Yes, uh, they are on. Uh, copy, Alec. Олег, uh, don't uh, be in a hurry. Uh, so we need you to take pictures of the uh, orifices with the mirrors that uh, the sensors uh, are equipped with. Okay. Take, take pictures, yes, take pictures. You mean to remove it? No, you don't have to remove the MLI flap. So I have to take close-up pictures from all sides. Yes, uh, let's affirm, Alec. So you take uh, pictures from all sides, uh, close-up as much as possible. Piotr, and you are, are uh, retrieving the cap keeper right now. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct. Copy. And the first connector to mate is 8-14. Of course, you're right next 
it, it. I think I will collect all caps first, and then we'll go to eight five and eight six. Then, when I'm next to those connectors, I will stow the cap keeper, and then we'll start connecting eight. Uh, connectors after that. Is it okay? Yeah, it's at your discretion, Piotr. Well, it's uh, the sequence here is not uh, prioritized, so it is at your discretion. Okay, sounds good then. Oleg, now you can go to the other side and take pictures of the EKV horizontal sensors from there. So take photos of uh, from the other side. Copy. I removed the cap from the connector A-14, copy, Piotr. Unintelligible. Come again. So there's a cap with some kind of a key. Yes. On this connector, it was with the key, and on 5 and 6 without it. Well, 5 and 6, they are plastic connectors, but still they are high-frequency connectors. It's just like a plate 17. Very similar to it, there are plastic connectors that are high-frequency ones. Yes, that's correct, Peter. Oleg, uh, now uh, there is sunrise where you are, so you can wait uh, for a couple minutes more. And well, I took pictures from one side only. Copy. You mean uh, from uh, the side where you were first? Now I am translating to the other side. Well, I took pictures from the side of the headrail that I had installed, and now I am translating to the other side. Copy, Alec. In three and a half minutes, you will have insulation. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, 53 minutes, 44 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Got a double box out for you right now, looking at helmet cameras from Oleg Novitsky on the left there, Pyotr Dubrov on the right. They're in the final stages of routing all of these cables today. Right now, Pyotr Dubrov is at patch panel number eight on the Russian service module. He's got three cables that he's connecting to uh, tied into the TV system, um, tying together uh, the TV capabilities between the Russian multipurpose laboratory module and the Russian Zvezdas service module, and then one final uh, Ethernet patch cable just to complete that Ethernet routing from the U.S. segment of the International Space Station to the newly arrived multipurpose laboratory module. 
He's got three connections that he's making. You'll hear them referred to as uh, cables 8, 14, 8, 6, and 8, 5. Once he's able to get all of these connected, he'll take some final closeout photos of all of the mated or the connected uh, cables, and then he'll put the, the MLI, the multi-layer insulation, that uh, off-white flap you can see to the right there back in place, uh, providing some additional protection for all of these connections from that space flight environment. This will be the final cable routing task for the spacewalk today. They've already completed several, um, already well, we uh, attaching a cable both at the Russian service module and the MLM tying together uh, the two modules, uh, respective cores, antenna feeder units um, that are used for automated rendezvous and docking for Russian visiting vehicles like Progress and Soyuz. We have uh, a lot of uh, yeah. noise. Yeah. Yes, it, it has already started as far as I understand. Okay, I completed the pictures, Alec, all right. Now, uh, could you please translate uh, back to Peter's location, uh, to plate eight, okay? So when you were taking pictures, Alec, what about LED? Was it blinking? Something was blinking. A copy. Piotr, thank you for your report. Now that uh, about the cap keeper, so please start connecting connectors uh, 8, 5, and 8, 6. Yes, uh, I will start connecting presently. Well, Last time we didn't, last time during the EVA, or you didn't have time uh, to spend on that. You know, I need uh, to stow these caps. The lanyards on them are uh, so long uh, so that they uh, get snugged on the wires here. So I am trying to stow them. If you are willing and have a chance, could you please take pictures from this angle, how the cables from FGB towards the plate 18 are routed? I think it's a good opportunity here to take those pictures. Yes, I agree. I think I will be able to, to uh, take everything into the frame, so to say, to take picture of everything. Yes, Alia, could you please take pictures? So, Peter, have you stowed away the caps in the uh, cap keeper? Yes. Hooray. Success. Well done. So, do you want to take a break before you start connecting the connectors, Peter? Well, let me get to them first, and then I will take a breather. All right, it's up to you, Piotr. Uh, 
там часть сейчас все выглядит просто лирки совершенно без шнурков, почти что. Okay, so there are no lanyards. The caps on the connectors are tight. I think I took a picture of one. Oleg, then could you please translate towards Peter's location? Okay, eight five connector, here it is. Five hours, one minute, 15 seconds into today's spacewalk, so another I'm one of those short handovers. So we'll be getting our video link back with the station momentarily. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the two spacewalkers, Pyotr Dubrov and Oleg Novitsky, working now together to to finish connecting these cables. Uh, we were just hearing that uh, cable 8.5, uh, so one of the two TV cables uh, now connected there at uh, that patch panel on the Russian service module. Um, so we had three cables that we were looking to get connected right now, 8.5, 8.6, and 8.14. And then once that's done, they'll take photos of all of those newly mated connections and then close the multi-layer insulation flap over and that will wrap up all of our cable routing activities for today. Okay, the next one. All right, um, removing the cap. Mating connectors have a eight dash six on of SM MLM one. Cable bundle two connector have a HFP eight dash six on SM uh, plate eight. They are mated. Copy, Peter. Now I have to uh, secure them in the spring clips, Olirka clips. Нравится тебе эта антенна, Олег, да? Олег, you like or you love this antenna, right? Come again, Mosca. I mean, you like this antenna? Well, it is very hard to pass by, to get around it. You know, I can try to find the better position to uh, go around it. Yes, I understand, Oleg. That's why I ask. Well, but antenna is actually beautiful. Okay, this is Piotr. So the caps from five and six connectors are. So 
uh, before you close the MLI flap, could you please take a picture of uh, this location as well? So you mean to connect number three, then uh, close all flaps? That's, uh, is this the way to do it? Yes, uh, you can do it, Piotr. It's a go. All right, uh, do it. Copy in work. Let me get to the connector first. The cap is off. Uh, there is no Ford. Everything is fine. It's a go to start mating, Peter. Okay, from the connector side, there is no Ford as well. I did made it here, but uh, the arrows are not aligned here. Is the uh, latch closed? Yes, the latch is closed. Piotr, stow it for now, and we will test the cable and verify whether the mating has been successful. Artyom, if you have time, do you mind if uh, I take a few pictures here? Because there is um, a really good view with the name of Gagarin there. Yes, we do have some free time now um, till we check out the uh, cable c connections. Copy. The most complicated, the, the most challenging thing with mating connectors is to watch your hands and make sure you don't do anything extra. That's right. And now we take, can take pictures. Well, since you're taking pictures, can you turn around? Yes. I am counting for five seconds, standing by for the five seconds. Okay. How is the view from your camera? I'm just trying to grasp this and capture this beautiful view. And don't forget about your lights. Piotr. I'm trying. That's not me. Okay, the camera is on. Did you uh, manage to take pictures of the connectors? Uh, it's work in progress. Copy, we see that. Piotr. Piotr. We stopped receiving video from both of your cameras. 
Well, for high definition, high definition camera, the LED is illuminated. Okay, good, good, good. We are seeing uh, the video now. I am suggesting you close the MLI flap and stand by for the checkout for the end of the checkout of the TV and Ethernet on TV. Copy. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston, five hours, 11 minutes, 52 seconds into today's spacewalk. The cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov just now wrapping up all of those final connections, taking photos of the now mated connections and closing the flap over patch panel number eight on the Russian service module. Um, right now the team's working to do um, some connectivity tests, both in the Ethernet cables uh, and also the TV systems on board, uh, which have now tied together between the Russian service module and the MLM, the multi-purpose laboratory module. NASA, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehe is inside the Russian segment, so he's going to be assisting with that Ethernet connectivity test. For now, though, the crew is getting a few minutes to rest before uh, they get words from the flight controllers down on the ground in the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, on what the next steps are. Per the nominal timeline, they were going to move off next and retrieve uh, two items from inside of the airlock, uh, the bio-risk containers that'll be installed outside of uh, the Poisk module, and also a platform with adapters eventually bound uh, for installation on the uh, the MLM. Today's spacewalk was originally slated to last about six and a half hours, um, including these next few tasks. As of right now, they're still about 30 to 40 minutes behind on their uh, nominal timeline. Um, so we'll see what words we get. Um, assuming they complete those additional two tasks, uh, there will be a couple of items for jettison at the very end of today's spacewalk, uh, including the protective cover um, over uh, one of the attachment points. Reach <coughs> over as well as the cover from the Ethernet cable reel uh, that Oleg Novitsky had to disassemble when it proved stubborn and he was unable to release it from its uh, stowage point on a handrail outside the Russian segment. So zealously.
Ну, как-то так. Sounds like this. Well, the weather is very still. Artyom, we closed it. Copy. And you can move over to STU, and we're standing by for the end of the checkout. Copy. The target is pushing me a little bit. Is it the target that's, that's in the way? No, I don't think so, Piotr. And I got the second one. Copy. So you are on STO. Right, I am on STO. And I'm trying to free up some space for Oleg uh, and move to the side. All right, so the um, adjustable tether is on S2. Guys, just FYI, the Ethernet cable is a success. One of the one of the two uh, TVS connectors and test was successful, and we're standing by for the results of the second connector test. Okay, we've been waiting for the results. And guys, that's like the last leg of our journey here. So um, take a break, get some rest. Artyom, how much light do we have left? 40 minutes till the twilight, uh, till the orbital night. 
Okay, copy. So five hours, 21 minutes, seven seconds into today's spacewalk. Uh, both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, whose helmet camera we're looking through right now, are taking just a breather as they have now completed all of the cable routing tasks for today. Um, right now they're doing some connectivity tests inside. I'm checking out the, the now link TV systems between uh, the MLM and the Russian service module. Uh, as well as the Ethernet connectivity. Again, everything started off uh, earlier today with the routing of an Ethernet cable that's linking together the U.S. segment of the station and the newly arrived MLM. Uh, it's going to provide data connection for any future payloads and also a redundant data path to controlling the uh, European robotic arm once it's up and running outside of MLM in the Russian segment. All of that routing and connection has been done successfully so far, so they're doing these connectivity tests uh, before the uh, spacewalkers get the go to move on to any additional tasks for today. Um, they also were able to accomplish the installation of a couple of gap spanners known as uh, handrails, essentially long handrails to help with translation or movement outside of the Russian segment over on MLM with Dubrov installing three of those right off the bat after exiting the Poisk airlock earlier this morning. Um, so for now, they're they're taking a breather. Uh, the other primary tasks that were on the timeline for today were the deployment of two external uh, pieces of hardware, one uh, a set of containers for the bio-risk research experiment outside of the Poisk module, and another one is a passive platform with adapters that will be used for hosting future payloads outside of MLM. Um, so with those two tasks still to go, they're uh, just again taking a breather right now before getting uh, some words from flight controllers down in Moscow. Again, we're five hours, 23 and 10 seconds in to a planned six and a half hour spacewalk today. Congratulations. That's good to hear. And we are here. I just wanted to tell you that you have completed the, all, everything that was planned for today, but uh, we will continue with the adapter platform and be a risk. 5.19 is the time um, outside. For the for your spacewalk, how are you feeling? Great. This is Peter. Wonderful. This is Oleg. You sound really upbeat, guys. That's good to hear. Well, we got really excited, really early. So the night was pretty eventful. That's why we are so perky in the morning, from early morning. I heard about that. Uh, 
I hope it stays there. Okay. I can't really reach over the platform from here. No, you'll have to translate to get to it. Could you remove this uh, layer and put it on the platform because it's a little bit in the way. Well, why do you want why do you need me to move it so that I don't have to like bend that I don't have to get it bent over the platform. And it will be closer to the translation handrail, so maybe it will help. Handle is now in the way. And so five hours, 27 minutes into today's spacewalk, the two cosmonauts did get the go to continue on their nominal timeline to move back towards the Poisk airlock and retrieve uh, the next two items that are going to get installed. Uh, one's the BioRisk, and that is a payload that's going to be installed outside of Poisk, uh, exposing different uh, samples from the ground to the spaceflight environment, the vacuum of space. Um, and then also looking to see them retrieve a platform with adapters. It'll be a passive uh, platform hosting site uh, for any future payloads outside of the Russian segment. You will need it. It's the wire cutters that you may need. So um, it's not clear how the beta pet tower is going to behave. Um, it's um, supposedly secured with uh, Velcro, but it's better to be safe than sorry, sorry, because there were way too many occasions when it didn't go as planned today. That is true. Maybe you can move over to those handrails, and I will take this virus platform. trying to play around all those rats. The crew lock bag is a little bit in the way. This is much better. Okay. No. I need to have the crew lock bag.
And it's eligible. What are you saying? My legs got caught on something. It's uh, um, the cables. Cables. Copy. Right there. Hey, are you going to be here? Yes. Artem. Go ahead. Would you like us to take a couple of pictures next to... Can we take a couple of pictures next to the airlock while it's still light? Yes, go ahead. Uh, we have about two minutes. Take a break, and then we can... Make a few pictures. You look like a Winnie the Pooh that got stuck after having too much honey. You mean stuck and trying to leave the rabbit's house? Yes. Don't forget that you need to leave some um, juice left in the battery to take pictures of beer risk. I've been using it sparingly, and after the beer risk, I wanted to suggest you leave the cameras on, and all your further movements uh, can be done with the cameras on, but please save some um, batteries for the beer risk. All right, then I am going to get the container. And it's probably going to be difficult to do it with just one uh, tether. Five hours, 34 minutes, 33 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Both Oleg Novetsky and Peter Dubrov now back at the Poise airlock, extracting the next pieces of hardware that they're going to be installing outside. Uh, first up is the BioRisk containers. Uh, these are part of a, a long-running experiment um, looking at obtaining data on any physical genetic changes um, in some microorganisms like bacteria, also fungi, uh, things that have a chance to be found on spacecraft equipment, so exposing them uh, to that uh, vacuum of space, that harsh spaceflight environment in low Earth orbit. Uh, all of this uh, being done to uh, again, not only understand the viability of these different organisms uh, once they go into a very extreme environment uh, like low Earth orbit, but also understanding the chances of any surfaces of spacecraft potentially being contaminated once they uh, are sent up on missions. Um, one particular point of interest, um, any anything being found on exterior surfaces once we begin interplanetary missions is 
obviously you don't want to bring anything with you if you're searching for signs of um, past life or anything like that on the surface of a planet like Mars. Um, so the BioRisk is going to be exposing a number of different samples um, to that vacuum, that radiation environment of low Earth orbit and just continuing to inform uh, design processes on the ground, um, having a number of different Earth applications as well uh, in extreme environments and things like gas and oil pipelines. Yeah, just in case stay close to Oleg, of course. I am getting ready to um, take the platform over. Right now, we're continuing to get a view from the helmet cam of uh, Pyotr Dubrov. He's EV2. He's in a, a suit with blue stripes on it. He's looking in at EV1, Oleg Novitsky, in a suit with red stripes along it as he's inside the Poisk airlock uh, working to remove the bios containers. It's not really recommended to attach it to yourself. Okay, I copy. And while they continue to get this hardware out for its installation outside Poise, we did hear on the ground that there was a successful checkout of the now linked TV systems between the Russian service module and the Russian multi-purpose laboratory module, the MLM. So that was the focus of a lot of that final cable routing that we were watching over the last hour and a half. And so a successful test has been confirmed. My recommendation is on the adapter panel, uh, uh, pull off the uh, rubber bands of the transportation tethers, so that would enable you to translate as comfortably as possible. Well, the question is what are we going to grab onto? Well, if you unravel the tether to its full length, then you can route it outside. Yes, I think it will be easier to unravel it. If I use the short tether, then it doesn't allow me to turn around near the panel. Inside, I can only work uh, with the long tether. If both uh, tethers, if both uh, transportation tethers. And as of right now, we are five hours, 40 minutes, 29 seconds into today's spacewalk. Another short handover, so waiting to reacquire communication. That video link up with the space station as our 
KU band antennas now point at a different tracking and data relay satellite uh, that are in geosynchronous orbit and are that primary communications uh, method that we have for talking with the crew on board the station, also getting live video down from them. Uh, so we'll get that back momentarily. As you can see, the station right now currently orbiting just over the South Pacific off the western coast of the very southern tip of South America. It's going to continue to swing up on a northeasterly track, eventually crossing the Terminator line, that line between night and day, uh, with the sunset and orbital nighttime coming up for these crew members in just about 19 minutes from now. Uh, but they are still at that Poisk module, working to get the, the bio-risk containers out. Those are uh, part of a an experiment project on board the station that's been running for several years. And they're going to be installing these uh, to expose them to the low Earth orbit environment just outside of the Poisk module. Second day. What is the second uh, tether? Well, it's holding it. Okay, hold this one again. On what about the other end? Okay, here you go. Be careful, the hatch. Hold on, hold on. Okay, let me pull out, let me pull out the tether. And the cameras are rolling, yes. I think I turned it off, but it probably got, it probably got pressed to so go on again. Yes, I hooked the I hooked the tether. Um, One transportation of Tether on the Tether uh, 6029. The second one is inside still. Okay, you can probably take this out for now. You can probably egress with this particular Tether, the one I handed to you. And I am going to follow you. Well, I need to uh, uh, reconnect the tethers because it's uh, short, long, is not going to be enough. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to route it here. Let me take the entire bundle inside. No, you don't need to do that. Now let it hang here and let it stay hooked over here. <coughs> okay, hold on. Let's take it outside slowly. Are you still holding on to it? Uh, grab it, grab the handle. Yes. Yes, I'm holding it in. Uh, with, I'm holding it by the handle. Okay. Okay. Now let me figure out our my own. I got the short one. Are you holding it? Yes, I am. Okay. 
I'm going to hook the second one. So I'm going to hold on to it, and you're going to free up some space for me. I hope it will be long enough. So are you are holding on to it? Yes, or you can let go. I'm trying to rotate over here. I, I think you can uh, advance further, and I can hand you the bundle later. I need to move higher. So this runs parallel to the handrail. Okay, let me try to ingress feet first. You can probably uh, reconnect the charger over here. Otherwise, it will be inconvenient to do it later. I got it. I'm holding it. And I am letting it go. We reconnected the short one. Uh, you will need to translate along the EVA hatch uh, in, in the direction of the cargo vehicle. So, toward Bacadillo. So I'm going to uh, move uh, the bundle itself uh, closer to where I am. Okay, I got it. There is also a metal handrail 
it looks like it's it's an at an angle and secured safely. MCC Moscow EV2, how do you read me? Go ahead. Here from the EV hedge, there is an, a handrail um, that is a support uh, tread like handrail. Yes, it is uh, designed to serve as a handrail so you can use it for translation. Copy. So is the length of your tether sufficient? Yes. I'm taking it. Okay, you got it. Okay, copy. Or rather, I hand it over to you. Well, I still need to translate upside down. That's an option as well. Okay, we've reattached it. In about eight minutes, uh, there will be sunset. Uh, we're going to have sunset here as well. Copy. Well, I'm talking about you. I was talking about the orbital eclipse. So, can we move further? The gloves are heating up here. No, I see it. Uh, I see it. We need to figure out how it is more comfortable to translate. There are some experiments here. I'm going to try to translate um, along the handrails. Yes, you can use this particular metal handrail as well. So there are black supports here. Well, it will be uncomfortable here. I'm here on the metal handrail. So you can move on further. Five hours, 55 minutes, 18 seconds into today's spacewalk. Both cosmonauts, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dugrov, right now working to transport the platform with three BioRisk containers that they removed from the Poisk module uh, that are going to be installed on a platform just outside uh, on the module itself.
So let me move this. It's been a successful day for these spacewalkers so far, successfully routing and connecting all of the cables that were planned, including uh, an Ethernet cable to provide a redundant path for commanding payloads and the European robotic arm once it's up and running outside the MLM. Um, also installing three gap spanners or long handrails to aid in future translation or movement around the multipurpose laboratory module for future spacewalks. Uh, also routing a number of other cables uh, tying together the, the core's automated rendezvous antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module and the uh, MLM, along with uh, tying together uh, the service module and MLM TV systems. And we've gotten confirmation that um, those check checkouts were done on that TV system connection, and that was done successfully. Um, we also heard that they uh, successfully checked out the Ethernet, the data connection, uh, tying together the U.S. segment to MLM, again, for that redundant path for payloads and control of the European robotic arm, and that was also successful. So for now, though, as we are coming up on the six-hour mark, uh, they're continuing to work with these bio-risk containers to get them installed where they're going to remain outside, exposing uh, different samples to the vacuum of space. Uh, here's a graphic of what it's ultimately going to look like, and you'll see it in the helmet cameras, but there are three containers, um, each containing different samples. And again, BioRisk looking at different microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, other um, small microbes that might be found on the outside of a uh, spacecraft before it goes into outer space, looking at the viability of these different uh, organisms once they're exposed to that spaceflight environment, and then consequently any of the, the possibility of transferring Earth organisms on the exterior of surfaces of any spacecraft, uh, particularly those bound for interplanetary destinations. Uh, this item is large, it won't fit into the crew lock bag. Peter, at the end of the EVA, we're going to gather everything into one bundle, the better pair cover MLI flap uh, from panel 17 and the cover from the Ethernet uh, reel, and we're going to bundle it together as one object, and we're going to, jet, uh, to push it away or jettison it. So you do not need to put it inside the crew bag. Okay, copy. And just then the crew members are getting an update. So they'll, they'll have to remove a protective cover um, over the attachment point on Poisk where they're gonna install uh, the BioRisk containers and uh, its attachment payload. Um, the plan uh, was already set in the normal timeline to jettison that cover overboard at the end of the spacewalk. Um, there was one other item that was set for jettison a little bit earlier in today's operation, uh, the cable reel container for that Ethernet cable that was routed. They were unable to get the entire reel off of its temporary stowage point on a handrail, um, able to remove the cover of that of that cable reel, and so that'll be bundled together with the protective cover, which we can see was just removed, and those two will both be jettisoned overboard. Again, these are planned in advance, um, and they are done uh, in conjunction with the trajectory officer here in Mission Control Houston, just to ensure uh, that we have uh, very sound knowledge of the expected trajectory of these items and to ensure that there's no risk of recontact with the International Space Station. But nevertheless, you should end up on the side of the cargo vehicle so you can cover that handle. If Peter holds uh, on to the handrail with his left hand and if I press it from above, then uh, he can probably reach it with his right arm. We should try. 
I think there's a chance I copy. I hope that's how it's going to work out. The, there's some sort of a tether here. I think it's, it's on the handrail that's attaching to the metal handrail. There's some sort of a tether. Okay, you got it. I am going to um, translate over there. So I am, I am not going to uh, touch it here. I'm going to reconnect from above. So I'll take a look which way it's more comfortable for you to approach. Because then you will need to release the hooks after you install the panel. Is it convenient for you to work with the handle? Uh, well, I can try if you hold on to it. So do you need to me to push it towards you? I will need to get it coming from the right side. I need. I will need to turn around and push it to the right. Okay, I'm. You hold. You're holding on to it. Yes. Uh, you can let it go. Did it get to the point? Yes. There are some sharp components protruding here. In order to work with the handle, I will need to get to the handrail. I need to approach from this side of the handrail where your uh, tether is secured to. So you holding on to the? Uh, are you holding on to the handle? Yes. Yes, I'm holding it on, holding on to it. Be careful on from my side. Uh, there's some sharp uh, edges from the breeze. From my side on the breeze, there is a uh, sharp edge. Uh, which is uh, what is good is the handle is secured from this side as well. Uh, I wouldn't be able to reach it from my side. There is some sort of an antenna here. So when we turn, uh, when we rotate the handle into the um, closed position. <laughs> So it's uh, sticking uh, 
against the MOI. Okay. So how do we grab it? Well, so do you see the tab? Uh, should we, uh, our time, should we set the tab parallel to the handle? Yes, uh, set the flag parallel to the handle. There is a catch. There is a catch somewhere. It got, it, we were able to set it from first try. I am surprised myself. I was thinking you would have a hard time reaching the handle, but, well, well, it was a little inconvenient. So the handle was uh, pressed against the protruding part of the structure. Well, do you guys need a break? I think we could use a little break. Okay. So where do we put the tethers? Remove the tethers attached to yourself or to crew up back, whichever option is more convenient. I remove bio risk and translate uh, further down along the circumference to uh, set the magnetic lock and set it into the magnetic lock. Where Peter is located, well, where you're located, you need to translate a little further and you will be near the magnetic lock. Okay, I am going to try. I see the magnetic lock. And where should they secure it on uh, the crew lock bag exactly? Well, on the rail of uh, the uh, crew bag or on, on the hardware, maybe. Maybe on the swing arm? Yes, if uh, you have enough space there, yes, it's a go to secure it there. Okay, let me see. I think it should be enough, should be sufficient uh, space there. I think it will be easier to install the uh, by risk, uh, you know, on, only using one pair of hands, uh, not four. Yes, Alek will remove the risk, will pass it on to you, and you will install it. Uh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should secure it with something right away, maybe on that handrail uh, here. Well, you, you should have a tether uh, available there, Piotr. You, you will have to retrieve it uh, as well later on. Yes, I agree. Okay, so... Let us use this tether from the platform. Piotr, please look at uh, the safety tether. Is it uh, tethered correctly? Where it, it is? It is on the swing arm. Yes, I secured it with one hook, and the other hook is on the first one. Yes, that's uh, the plan. So now it is secured on the tether on from that side. <laughs> yes, and also wire tie should be there, guys. So what will be the second uh, point of attachment? The, there, it, there's no need uh, to have the second point of attachment, because you will hold it with your hand. But before I uh, reach 
this installation point or location, I, you know, I won't be able to hold it one hand because I need to translate first. Well, yes, as once you are there, then you will hold it with one hand. Okay. So where should I attach it uh, here, Piotr? I will try to my short one, short tether. It is done. I'm holding it, you know, in uh, in case you need to do something. I'm removing the wire tie here. This is Piotr. It is done. It is removed. No, it is not exactly actually removed. I will have to redo it. Now it is removed, and I'm holding the unit. Okay. Well, I will have to see whether I will be in a good position to take it from you. The breathing hole was opened by you yesterday, correct? The breathing orifice uh, on the unit. Yes, that's correct. We did it. Copy. Thank you. I am holding it. Let it go. Yes, I let it go. I installed it. I installed it into the uh, lock. Copy. I think it will be hard uh, to remove the tether now. So in order to retrieve it, I just have to pull it, correct? No, you have, you have to open the lock first, okay? And then uh, to try to break it out. Yes, so the uh, lock. So why are you doing this? Oh, you mean you want to get to retether the hook. Yes, that's correct. I retethered it to the other side so that I could. Uh, now I installed uh, it under the uh, pip lock once again. It, it is installed. The lock is in the position closed. Now you will have to do to deal with the wire tie, Piotr. Copy. Alec, and uh, you you have a go to proceed uh, to move towards Piotr. You will go over the uh, circle, so to say, to the operator's post. Copy. So I tied the wire tie. Copy, Piotr. Thank you. So we continue uh, translation. Yes, that's correct. Piotr, if you want to take a break, please go ahead.
And so six hours, 15 minutes, 56 seconds into today's spacewalk. Uh, the crew members, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, just finishing up the installation of the bio-risk payload outside of the MRM-2, the Mini Research Module 2, also known as POISK, which is also serving as their airlock for today's excursion. This is one of the last uh, primary tasks that they had on their timeline. Uh, they will still have a, a jettison activity where they're going to jettison the protective cover that was over the uh, area where BioRisk was uh, installed along uh, with part of the cable reel cover um, from the Ethernet cable that was uh, routed a little bit earlier in today's spacewalk. And then one additional uh, task that we might be looking at uh, down the after this will be uh, the installation of a passive platform um, over on MLM, a platform with adapters for future payloads. But for now, we're a little over six hours, 17 minutes into today's spacewalk. So where should I go next? Originally planned to last six hours, 30 minutes. They're about 40 minutes behind in the normal timeline. Um, so depending on how many additional tasks they decide to undertake, we could be looking at a spacewalk in excess of seven hours today. This is 60.33, then 60.34. And the next one is just uh, beneath the operator post. I won't be able to reach it from here, I'm afraid. This is Piotr. I don't have the length of the short uh, tether. So where, at what handrail you are now, Piotr? Let me see. 60, 33, and 60, 34 is a long one. And the next uh, handrail beneath the post is 60, 35. I have a little bit of uh, margin here or a select here on the short tether, so I will try to use it to reach there. Uh, yes, I can give it a try. It's not easy to do that. And what about the upper handrail, not far from the uh, progress vehicle? It will take longer. Copy. But you have managed to reach, right, Peter, and grab it? Yes, I did. Copy. So the, the issue is resolved. What is waiting for us there? I think the most um, difficult um, stage or part of the route is uh, completed successfully.
So what do you think uh, will be the best way, the fastest way to do it, Piotr? Well, well, if we had used the same route that we used to take before, yes, that's correct. So this is not a very convenient way because there are big gaps between uh, the handrails and points of attachment. Well, Peter, while you're not very far away, you can take my tether and secure it to the operator's post. Yes, you can do it in an unintelligible. So this tether is a long one, and it will extend. Did you secure it? Yes, I did. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay, I uh, pulled the tether. I think I will try to translate from this side here. Yes, it is all right. I think I managed uh, to translate uh, here very well. Until the sunrise, so you have four minutes left, guys. Yes. Copy, copy. EVA one and two.
So I uh, went over the operator's post. Copy, Piotr. And I'm on my way. This is Oleg. Sounds good. So two minutes before the sunrise, guys. Well, you're practically at the end of the EVA. So we just need uh, to tidy everything up. Oleg, for this. You will have to work at the plate number nine with connector number 11. Then you will have to jettison the cover uh, to, uh, together with the MLI flaps. And after them, you will have to remove UKP, universal cable carrier, and to uh, put it in MRM2. And after that, you will ingress. Copy. So what do I have to do at uh, plate connector plate number nine? Uh, we have the connector, the 911, that you connected before. 9-11 will have to be tied with a wire tie. You will get the wire tie from Peter and uh, put it in place and take a picture of this configuration. Maybe oh, I will go to plate number nine. I will translate there for this is Piotr, because I'm closer to it. Piotr, do you have in the unintelligible? You know, I closed it with MLI flap, and it is just, uh, you know, there covered. But, you know, uh, there is a, a concern that during dynamic ops, this MLI flap can open up. All right, if you have a concern like that, then, of course, we will do what you ask. Thank you for understanding, guys. You know, there are three connectors uh, in parallel high-frequency connectors, and it's uh, number three between them. So, you know, it's not easy to wire tie it. Uh, to, to what should I wire tie it to? To cable? Oleg? So we had a short loss of signal. Piotr, you will have to uh, put the log back to MRM2. Well, actually, no. Leave it uh, at the opening of uh, the hatch. Of course, we will deal with the MLI. All right. Uh, the one that is uh, from plate 17. Yes, that's correct. All right. So I will retether my so that you know I won't waste waste time on that. If you have a chance, the BTP, a passive base point housing, should be left also near the hatch. And while you deal with the plate number nine, Alek will assemble the kit for jettisoning. Well, it's an option. Moscow, I have one tether on me right now. I will use it to secure the better passive best point housing or cover. And we'll leave this tether inside. Copy, Piotr. Six hours, 31 minutes, 30 seconds into today's spacewalk. Uh, both Novitsky and Dubrov have made their way back to the Poisk module, where they are just outside the hatchway. They've been discussing it with the flight controllers on the ground, but they're working now to move towards a jettison activity. 
So they will have some MLI, uh, some multi-layer insulation that was removed um, during the insulation of the bio-risk containers. Excavate. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm sorry. Alec, you can activate and even take a picture of bio-risk. Can you see it from here? Yes. But uh, only from, from this side. Well, at least from this side, thank you for reminding me. You are always welcome. And after you activate the cameras, do not uh, deactivate them until the very end, in end of the EV. So, I tethered uh, my tether uh, on the handrail 6122. Well, you don't have to uh, get it inside. Leave it there. Leave it there. So that, well, I can take it out again. Yes, it, it will be better. And to continue, it looks like the, the jettison will be the last task before all of the cleanup steps for today's spacewalk. Uh, standing by to hear if they're going to be separate items or if they'll be bundled together. But again, the, the Russian flight controller is working with the trajectory officer here in Mission Control Houston uh, as they pre-coordinate before any uh, jettison activities off the station. Once they're through with that, they'll be able to start moving into some of their cleanup, uh, one which will consist of uh, grabbing the cable carrier that brought out two of the bundles that were routed today and getting that back inside the POISC module, and then doing an inventory of all of their tools, making sure nothing got left outside before they start making their way back in with Novitsky slated to go inside of POISC first, followed by Dubrov and then the closing of the hatch, which would mark the official end of today's spacewalk. But for now, things continue. Six hours, 34 minutes, eight seconds and counting. Standing by for an upcoming jettison activity and then potentially wrapping up today's EVA activity. Well, the base point of flu inside. Okay, all the tethers are next to the hatch. There are two tethers of the crew lock bag and of the base point. Okay, copy, Piotr. Translate to plate number nine. And Alek will be at the edge of uh, the uh, EVA hatch and will deal with the bundling up the things for jettisoning. So I am translating to uh, the edge of the hatch because I have completed imagery. So did you switch off the camera? No, I l left it on. Uh, this is Piotr. I also uh, switching on uh, my camera. Piotr, could you? Then you don't have to take. Uh, kind of uh, separate pictures of uh, plate number nine. I think the LED is blinking, so it is on. Copy, Piotr. Artyom, there is some handrail, and uh, it is Taped with the tape, it is kind of uh, looks like a nominal central. Can I tether to it? Yes. It is 
tapes with the tape because it used to have targets installed on it before and uh, so there are targets close by but uh, you have a go to secure your tether on that one on that handrail Right now, uh, another interference uh, com uh, zone starts. Copy. Okay, the plate. Uh, it's, it's familiar location. Yes, and connectors also should be familiar to you as well. Okay, Alec, uh, Artyom, could you please uh, give me some recommendations how to bundle up all these things? Alec, on the cover of the hatch you have a wire tie tied. So I suggest tie the better pair housing or cover that you have just removed from Adam to Okay, where is the wire tie? It is on the cover of the rail. Oh, now I got it. Unintelligible. Don't be in a hurry. I will find a cover. I will take it into my hands together with a tether, and then we will assemble the bundle. Artyom, how can I find that connector that I, we need to secure? If you're looking at it, it's, you're looking at it. It's the cable that's above you right now. That one. Is it from coming from the cable bay? Yes. And which one of them? Yes, this is exactly that one. Okay. So it's uh, pound size 31U. 4122. Is that it? Is that the one I need? Uh, nope. It should be, it, the connector should be 911. Open up the MLI flap, the one that you're looking at right now. That's for MLM. Well, that's um, cable bay that you are touching with your hand. There is a little white cable going away from it, connected to the connector, and that's what you need. You're right. That's uh, what we need then. And what if I uh, attach it to the extension of the handrail? And we have the cable connected. Well, we have the cable connected here. I think. Unintelligible. I think it's going to work. Let me try and move this wire tie there. Okay, Artyom, I managed to reach the uh, cover of the Ethernet reel copy. And you need to take the BTP cover afterwards. 
А как мы вместе будем крепить? And well, how are we going to secure all, all of them? Well, you have a wire at the cover of the reel, and this wire can go through the strap. Got it. We don't need it to be super tight. It's just that we need to make sure that physically they're one whole, like one piece. I understand. Six hours, 42 minutes, 43 seconds into today's spacewalk and a live view in the helmet cam of Oleg Novitsky as he is now working with um, this metal disc. You saw this if you were watching a little bit earlier. Uh, that was the cover to the cable reel for the Ethernet cable linking the U.S. segment of the space station with the newly installed multi-purpose laboratory module on the Russian segment. It was still attached to the reel itself, uh, which proved a little bit stubborn, and they were not able to remove from its stowage point on the handrail. Um, so Novitsky was able to remove the cover and the cable with it. Um, the reel was originally slated to be jettisoned earlier in the spacewalk, um, but as they were not able to remove it completely, they put the cover temporarily inside the Poisk airlock. Uh, and are now getting ready to jettison it along with a piece of MLI multi-layer insulation that's no longer needed. Um, so the crew members are going to work to bundle the two together and then get ready to do this jettison. Again, all of these jettison activities always done in concert with the trajectory officer here in Mission Control Houston. Uh, they're controlled so the crew gets very specific instructions on how to push away. Uh, we have very good understandings of the drag characteristics, uh, the expected time um, to re-entry for these, uh, and obviously making absolute sure that there's not a risk of recontact. so they will push these off in a very specific direction. But that jettison should be the final task of the day, and then they'll be able to do all their cleanup steps, getting the uh, cable carriers back inside the airlock doing an EVA tool inventory, making sure they have everything they brought out with them uh, ready to go back in. And then they'll make their way back inside the Poisk module, close the hatch, and that will wrap up today's spacewalk. But for now, we're going to continue to watch, uh, getting some pretty good lighting conditions now as we get ready for this jettison. Take out of the crew look bag and uh, you, Mark, you can start closing the MLM as USM hatch and work for a radiogram 0078, and you start with the cover the valve checkout. I copy all, Moscow. After you close the hatch, Mark, please let us know because then we're going to switch to a different radiogram. It's the only one here? Yes. Okay, everything else is covers and ties and everything else. Okay, now I have it. Have the cable that's going away from the cable bay secured to the stanchion of the uh, handrail 22 in audible uh, 2232 copy Piotr and go ahead on space to ground one and I am trying to take a video of everything. Now, Mark, when you close the hatch, please report, and then we are going to switch to a different radiogram. So, Oleg, should we start? 
Well, most importantly is for me not to be in the way of myself. Uh, what is most important is to leave and secure one transport tether to UKP so that we have more than one. Can it be an adjustable um, tether? Yep, it can work because we are going to be taking it inside later. And Arthur, are we going to attach anything else to this uh, handrail? That's the last one. 1716 is the MLI cable, the last one. So the MLI cable, the cover of that point, and the cover of the Ethernet uh, reel. So that's it. Uh, that is it. Three items. Okay, we have put it all together, and now we have to figure out how to fit it all back in into the crew lock bag. Yeah, that's quite a puzzle. I think it's better to have the cap keeper rather than this tra rather than a trash bag. Well, cap keeper is the first. Uh, like we've never used the cap keeper before, but I think it is a really, really convenient thing. I agree. It's awesome that it has hooks that you can use because we were using French hooks during um, some other uh, space war. Uh, right, well, the French hooks was an old version of the cap keeper, and the new one has uh, a more modern version of hooks, spring hooks. Okay, I think I cooked up something here. Copy, Oleg. And I have it all secured. Second one is Piotr. Let's now not take off UKP. And we'll um, wait till the jettisoning, and then we can proceed and continue working. Well, we would have to the operator will have to move to the operator's post to do the jettisoning, or is it not a must? It's not a must. If you can get to the location of the jettisoning, you need to turn around and look at the um, AO and then decide. Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1, go ahead on Space to Ground 1. It's against the uh, vector and mark. You can start with 0079 radiogram closure of the Pegasus to a hatch. Copy. So you guys would like to move to the operator's post? Yes. Yes. 
and well we may be able to do something here okay now further continue with um UKP removal, and once you are done, push it into MLM. So would it be after going after Oleg? Well, you go in, you position yourself, and I can hand it to, to you after you do the jettisoning. Unintelligible. And we need to secure this one. Oleg, when you were uh, taking out UKP, uh, is the um, tether that it was uh, secured, uh, was it left there? Is it the one with the spring? Well, I did take it off, and we can put it somewhere around our feet. And it's not going to be too much in the way. There we go. Take the hook. Got it. So what's it for? It's just a red. Just attach it to the UKP. It's from the UKP. Copy. Nice. I figured it out, and I am going to the operator's post. Copy. Piotr, UKP can be taken. UKP can be... Uh, removed. Sounds good. And cover the SUSM valve. I did everything you need, wanted me to do with it. Copy, Mark. Thank you. And I think, uh, and Mark, for... Repress, we're going to be talking with you on Space to Ground, too. And this is Mission Control Houston, six hours, 56 minutes, 11 seconds into the spacewalk. Oleg Novitsky is now moving up to what's known as the operator's post, where he will then be in position to jettison uh, these two covers. One was the protective uh, multi-layer insulation. Uh, that was covering the point where the bioresk containers were installed on Poisk. Uh, the other is the 
piece of the cable reel uh, that was removed uh, when they were not able to remove the reel itself from a handrail. So these two items bundled together now will soon be jettisoned overboard. But I may be mistaken. Well, uh, the movement when you push it do it towards the large surface of the cover. So don't do any um, spin wrist movements. Don't spin it. Pago, a SUSM hatch is closed. This is Mark. I'm not Peter. Uh, did you copy that I closed the hatch? Yes, we did. Thank you. Well, I have removed the wing nuts um, from Ugape, and uh, all that's left is removing it, and I'll stand by for Oleg, and we can continue working. Copy. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try. Sounds good. Aim first, Oleg. Have you removed the adjustable tether? Yeah, we have. So aim and then jettison. I think it's going pretty well. Copy, we see it. Just uh, please. Continue uh, filming it. I think I think it's going pretty well. I think I, it's a little bit too low. So it went uh, behind AO, and you can start with egress into MRM. Uh, we are going to run uh, to check that all um, add-on equipment is in place, and then we can egress. And it's um, behind me, right? Yeah. All right. Well, just as we cross the seven-hour mark in today's spacewalk, that jettison complete. Trajectory officer here at Mission Control Houston already reporting it looks like a good trajectory for that jettison. Uh, they'll continue to just track, get a, a drag coefficient on it as it continues to make its way away. Uh, but again, the, the direction is coordinated in advance of any jettison uh, just to, to minimize any risk of uh, recontact with the International Space Station. So 
with the jettison now complete, uh, both spacewalkers are now going to make their way to the Poisk module. They'll uh, first get a cable carrier that's been temporarily stowed outside and a handrail back inside, then do an inventory and then start making their way back in. Previous CVA and did everything for this CVA, so this is a complete and total success, and let's uh, uh, egress. Well, we freed up the space, installed all the handrails. The handrails are, are the uh, main goal, especially the ones that are named after people. And so, let's uh, start the equipment checkout. I'm going to go through it, and you um, check, then verify that that everything's in place. And so, Piotr, since Oleg is moving, let's start with you. OTA with a swing arm and tool caddy are in place. Are they? Yes. Would you repeat your last? They are in place. Copy. The extension for the reel is also in place. It is. Copy. Small, small red for glisser is also in place. Small, small red for the uh, wrench. It is here indeed on the um, ratchet wrench. Large, small rest. It's also here. Adjustable. And uh, the adjustable one. Same thing with the adjustable. Small, small rest. And small, small is also here. Copy, Piotr. Everything looks good for your add-on equipment. Uh, Oleg, are you ready? I am. Copy. So OTA, swing arm, and tool caddy are in, in place. We see them. The um, real extension, we see that through Piotr's camera and for the rest, we need to, it's better to sh show us uh, small, small red for glisser. I I got it. Small, small red for the wrench. This here, got it. Large, small red uh, to secure the uh, equipment. I got it. And the adjustable red. And the adjustable is here. Great. The crew lock bag is inside the MRM. It is there indeed. The crew lock bag is indeed here. And we did not get, take any equipment uh, from the crew lock bag besides the cap keeper. That is right. I haven't even opened the uh, second half. Copy. So, Oleg, you can proceed with egress, and uh, Piotr, uh, please remove UKP from the translation ha handrail. Copy. Time outside, guys, is seven hours. So, you, EVA is lasted for seven hours. That's awesome. So am I good to in, in, ingress? So it's probably going to be convenient for you to take it uh, and just drag it in from the inside. All right, sounds good. Okay, I have removed the UKP. Copy. And move it inside or goaded inside. The short uh, tether is inside. I copy Oleg. Oh, 
можно на одном длинном внутри. And you can secure it with just one large uh, tether, since uh, you're kind of halfway in. Okay, I I do agree. And right now, we just heard both crew members do a quick tool inventory, reporting everything looks good, and so now they're making their way inside. Oleg Novitsky, EV-1 in the suit with the red stripes is going in first. And right here, you can see the cable carrier. This has been attached just to a handrail just outside. That's got to go inside first uh, before Pyotr Dubrov can make his way in and close the hatch. Okay, I'm inside. Copy. Now let me unhook the tether. Sounds good. Maybe we should move the crew lock bag out of there too, so it's going. It's not in the way. Well, let me try and clean up here. Maybe put the crew lock bag like somewhere around our feet. And the hook. Well, it's probably going to be in the way, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's going to be in the way uh, when I'm closing the hatch. Maybe we should secure it to the next handrail. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because I can't really, like, there is no way I can prop myself up here. What's that? It's probably the base point uh, cap that was secured to this one, the empty one. Okay, got one. The cap, I'm going to, that, I'm going to move that cap away from here. You can attach it to the platform and then move it somewhere. Yeah, I'll go and attach it to the crew lock bag. Okay, here is crew lock bag. Control two. Fuel monitor. Okay, understand. So I put it away. Oof, it's hot. I can hand it over to you like this. If you pull up the scissors on the outside, there is a hook. Maybe you can reach it and grab it. Or maybe you can um, hold on to the uh, panel, and I can hand it over to you, uh, whichever way you prefer. Well, okay, I'm holding on to the, I'm holding on to the panel. Okay, let me take a look. Okay, hold on to the panel for now. There's no rush. There's no rush. I'm holding it. Okay, I got it. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to secure it over here. You can uh, pull it in all together. Okay, I'm going to pull off the second feather. Okay, I got it. I don't think that's going to be in the way. Your feet are going to be below forward when you're going to close it. Other than that, we're going to secure it all very well. That's true. Okay, let's try. 
if something happens, I'm going to start moving it somewhere. I am going to try to position myself where I was at the very beginning. I am ready to start the ingress. I start ingressing the MRM copy. Okay, that was like done like a pro. Okay, okay, pull up, pull up your stomach. Inaudible. Um, the nurse didn't carry me as far as I wanted to. Now I need to uh, bring everything else in. I am inside. Uh, the hooks are attached to the internal handrail. Copy. Well, Gennady Mikhailovich needs to give you a go. Okay. Seven hours, 13 minutes, 34 seconds still counting into today's spacewalk bolt. Uh, of our cosmonauts, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Durov now making their way inside the poise module. As a reminder for Russian spacewalks, once the hatch is closed, that'll mark the end of today's activity. Copy. So once both are inside, they'll remove the protective ring and they'll be turning off their helmet cameras. And then once those are completed, we'll get ready to have the hatch closed. Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, the second one in, will be the one closing the hatch. We'll stand by for the end of today's spacewalk. So, so the timer started incrementing. So you can start removing the protective ring. What did you say? You can just fold that particular tab. So we need to move it to the side and fold it so it doesn't get in the way. Hold on. Here we go. How was it before? Uh, routed before? Well, it was under this particular yellow plate. I'm trying to tuck it to the side. You see, a familiar path is the most, this is the shortest one. Well, here is the water flying again. Peter, Oleg. Uh, go ahead, Artem. After you sew the protective ring, you need to inspect 
uh, the interface of the uh, EV hatch and to make sure there's n there no there's no fog uh, in the area where the uh, hatch closes, and then you will need to turn off your helmet cams. Except for the protective ring in the area of the uh, hatch, there's nothing else there. What about the interface? Uh, everything looks fine. There was a brief LOS. Uh, we lost you when you were reporting about the seals. We inspected the seals. They are uh, intact. There is no damage. There's some dust particles, but these are unavoidable. Hopping. Then turn off your helmet cam. Both. Uh, so Erka wasn't running. Was it? Well, I had both. I had both running. I had both cameras on. Right now the LED is not on. So basically you need to make sure that both are off. I have both off. Okay, copy. Uh, so you, we're waiting for the sublimators uh, in order to close the hatch um, com uh, completely. You can uh, remove uh, the bracket of the CO1 panel so you can close but not latch the hatch. Okay, uh, Peter, always uh, turn off the ISTR and the cold hot switch, put it at least in the uh, in position three. Copy, ISTR is off. KV2 also ISTR, so the heat control is on three, and I was just saying his heat control is on two. How copy? Copy. Sounds good. Six minutes have elapsed. I confirm. I see similar data. So can I lean on you? Of course. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to take some more uh, photographs with the uh, hatch in the background. So I will... I'll strike a pose. It looks like the LED on your camera is not blinking. Why so I speaking simultaneously? And this is Mission Control Houston. So in the final steps now to complete this spacewalk today, we'll recap all the tasks completed. But for now, both of the cosmonauts inside of Poisk. Uh, their helmet cameras have been turned off. Now just waiting for confirmation that the hatch has been closed and the EVA will be complete. Okay, so drying out is nominal for Peter. Let's wait for that 
uh, message in all of space suits. Oh, you see, you can tell right away who was doing the hard work. You were both. You were both working hard today. You did a great job today, guys. Until we're drying out, no amino for E1. Copy. You can start closing the hatch. Copy. Starting. Making sure the cord doesn't get caught. We need to do something with the cord on the range. Uh, yes, the, this particular attachment is not very convenient. It wraps itself around. Uh, what attachment are you talking about? Uh, the key that's attached by a cord and it con uh, is attached to the handle that's opposite the attachment. Uh, Point. So when we rotate it, so that particular cord wraps around the key. Well, you haven't done any rotation yet, have you? I started. I started turning it. But you didn't. You, you didn't get a go though. Okay. Copy standing by. Did your drying out? I did. Did your drying out? Uh, complete. Gennady gave us a go. Gennady gave us a go. Okay, copy. Okay, I got it. Okay, Peter, continue hatch closing. And after the rollers are in the closed position. Uh, copy starting to close. One click. I got two clicks. So, the rowers are in the closed position. The hatch is closed. Copy. Congratulations on the successful completion of the AVA. The time of the AVA is 7 hours 25 minutes. Guys, thank you very much for all the work done today. Uh, it was a major effort for you to uh, catch up on everything that was left uh, from the previous AVA and completed all the tasks for this AVA. Thank you very much for your work. And, and after a certain time interval, we're going to have uh, the uh, debrief. Uh, if we're looking at the Moscow time, it's already going to be today. Thank you very much for pre training us, preparing everything, for um, working with us during the EVA. Thank you very much for being very thorough and knowledgeable and working through all the Abnormal cases that we encountered during the video. Looking forward to working with you again. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed working with you as well. All the abnormal cases that came up uh, during the activity we'll discuss with you tomorrow. So I am wishing you successful repress and uh, get a good break. Thank you, Artyom. I will talk to you later. Okay, all the best. Bye. Goodbye.
All right, well, this is Mission Control Houston. We did get confirmation the hatch was closed. That hatch closed coming at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern Time, 22.16 GMT. And with the hatch closed, the EVA comes to an end with a total length of seven hours and 25 minutes. Again, total EVA length of seven hours, 25 minutes. Hatch closed coming at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern, 22.16 GMT. Seven hour, 25 minute spacewalk that began at 9.15 51 a.m. Central, 1051 a.m. Eastern, 1451 GMT. Power to 210 millimeters mercury. Copy, that is Q card 10. So all told, they accomplished every major task on their timeline today, starting off with uh, finishing up some routing of an Ethernet cable to integrate the uh, newly arrived multipurpose laboratory module with the U.S. segment, providing a data path for future payloads uh, and a redundant path for controlling the European robotic arm outside of MLM once it's up and running. Uh, they also were able to install three gap spanners um, that were originally on their timeline last week. Uh, those gap spanners, just large handrails to help with translation or movement around the outside of the International Space Station. Those were all successfully installed along with one additional gap spanner uh, on the front side of the or the forward-facing side of the MLM module uh, that was originally on this uh, spacewalk before the addition of a few more tasks. Uh, they then moved on to uh, additional cable routing, um, getting uh, both bundles out of uh, the airlock and then routed successfully between the, the service module and uh, the MLM. Uh, of those was another Ethernet patch cable just completing that data connection, um, two cables linking the television systems between the uh, the SM and the MLM, uh, and then one connecting uh, the core's antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module and the MLM uh, that will be used in um, visiting vehicle operations with the Russian Progress and the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, when they begin arriving to dock at the MLM uh, module. In addition to that, they were able to redirect a plume impingement and deposit monitoring unit. That happened right off the bat uh, pretty early on the spacewalk. Uh, that just outside uh, to uh, monitor the plumes or, or uh, essentially um, any of the, uh, the eject ejections coming out of the thrusters on the Russian segment uh, is all of the propulsive attitude control uh, found on the Russian service module and also used on Russian progresses uh, with MLM now being added to the mix soon for roll control. Um, so that's just a monitoring unit looking at surfaces um, outside uh, and how they're uh, interacting with any plumes coming out of those thrusters. In addition, they were able to uh, install the, the bio-risk containers of the bio-risk study outside of the POISC module uh, where they're going to remain and uh, be exposed to the vacuum of space as part of that long-running study. Uh, they also took quite a bit of photos of the exterior of the Russian segment uh, that will all be downlinked to uh, engineers and specialists on the ground for analysis. Uh, both of their cable routing and, and just a, a, of several surfaces along the Russian segment. So all told, a very successful spacewalk today. Uh, again, that hatch now closed, the spacewalk coming to an end, seven hours, 25 minutes in length, ending at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern. 170 in the compartment, 014, v Five EV two. Copy. Two hundred in the compartments, zero one for E V one and zero one one for E V two. Copy. Good 
220 in the compartment 008, EV1 and EV2, copy. Uh, at 260, 260, we will need to close it. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so a couple of numbers for you with Russian spacewalk number 50 now in the books. This was the 243rd spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades, the 11th. Uh, for the station just this calendar year, the sixth of which coming to our next Expedition 65. This was the third spacewalk for both Novitsky and Dubrov with a total spacewalking time of both of their resumes now of 22 hours and 38 minutes. All told, we've crossed uh, 1,500 hours well in advance of that, uh, 1,535 hours even of spacewalking time, and that equates out to 63 days, 23 hours, and zero minutes total spacewalking time on board the International Space Station. Two six zero. Closing. The message is no longer eliminated and inhibits. The starting stabilization, five minutes. Um, uh, could you tell us the MRM2 pressure for manual pressure gauge? We started the timer, one by one. Let me turn around. All right, well, with the hatch closed and the spacewalk now complete, the repress has already begun inside of Poisk. Once they get it back up to the same atmospheric pressure as the rest of station, right around 14.7 PSI, uh, they'll be able to get start getting out of their spacesuits and NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei standing by in the Russian segment to assist. But that will wrap up all the coverage for today's spacewalk. We do have another one coming up in just a few days, though, and we're going to be previewing that U.S. spacewalk number 77 uh, tomorrow on Friday, September 10th, with a briefing uh, with members of the International Space Station program and our flight control team. It'll be coming to you live here from the Johnson Space Center at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, so be sure to tune in. And that's all setting up for the spacewalk itself coming up this weekend on Sunday, September 12th. Our coverage will start at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Central. Uh, for a planned spacewalk by uh, Space Station Commander Aki Hoshide and Flight Engineer Thomas Pesquet uh, out of the Quest airlock to install a uh, an adapter section that is going to hold uh, one of the new rollout solar arrays as we continue to upgrade uh, the power generation capability on board the International Space Station. Also of note, this will be the first spacewalk ever out of the Quest airlock with two international partners astronauts going at the same time, uh, so be sure to tune in. So we'll be back with you tomorrow to preview that spacewalk and back for more spacewalk marathon coverage on Sunday. For now, thank you for joining us for this, the 50th Russian EVA outside of the International Space Station, a successful day, seven hours, 25 minutes, all primary tasks complete. Novitsky and Dubrov back inside the station, getting the airlock repressurized soon out of their suits, and then off to bed for the rest of Expedition 65. So thanks for joining. That'll do it for us from here in Mission Control Houston. So we will go ahead and sign off.